Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Half Demon Naruto becomes the most powerful ninja movie? So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Eternal Blizzard of Sword 66, link is in the description, also subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. Life in the hidden village of Konoha was good. Ken Uzumaki was recently appointed as the new Hokage of the village. He was a fierce ninja, with a kind soul. So much, that during one of his morning walks, he managed to find a six-tailed fox. Unfortunately, it was injured. It was yelping in pain. Luckily, Ken knew how to treat the wound. He calmed it down, and stabilized the injury. Thank you, the fox said. Ken was slightly startled by that. The fox smiled. Ken knelt back down. You're far too kind. Others would have run, the fox said. Ken shook his head. I don't believe in running. Regardless if you are an opponent, a friend, family, or an injured animal. That was something that I have learned over the years Ken said. The fox chuckled a bit. I like that. My name is Karyu. What's yours? Karyu asked. Ken. Ken Uzumaki. The fourth Hokage of Konoha Ken said. The fox tried to get up, but couldn't. Damn. I have no choice then, Karyu said. The fox began to transform into a beautiful woman. She wore a traditional kimono. The leg was still wrapped up. By God. You're beautiful Ken solemnly said. Karyu smiled at that, as Ken hoisted her up. He then took her into the village, to get treated. Over the next few months, once Kerry was healed, the two began to meet in the forests. They talked about themselves, life, and family, when Ken found out that she was the daughter of the feared demon fox god, Kai Ubi. But that didn't make Ken think less of her. And as those months went by, the two had gotten real close. They were an official couple. In love, and everything. And Kerry was invited to stay in the village, where everyone accepted her with open arms. And after two months of being in the village, the two got married. It was an event of a lifetime. The crowd was as big as it would be, for either an exam tournament, or for the initiation ceremony for a new Hokage. Hitsune Memories Chapter 1. Fatherly love is worth his life. One year after Ken and Karyu got married, they had a half Kitsune son. They called him Naruto. But on that day, Kaiubi decided to come. And it was enraged. Although a few ninja had fallen before Ken got there, it still wasn't a pretty sight. Ken had summoned the giant boss frog and tried to reason with Kai Ubi after knocking it down. You are the bastard that raped my daughter Ken Uzumaki Kai Ubi shouted. Ken was very shocked. I have done no such thing. I would never harm Karyu, Ken said. He was charging up his invented move that he called Rasengan. Liar. Kai Ubi shouted. The mere power of his voice had caused an earthquake. But Ken threw the Rasengan at Kai Ubi, stunning it. You must believe me sir Ken said. The two then noticed Karyu hiding. We shall find the truth then. Karyu. Did this man rape you or not? Kai Ubi asked. Ken was exhausted. During the fight, he had lost a lot of blood. Ken would never harm my father. I know he wouldn't. I love him. He is the father to my child. Karyu shouted. Kai Ubi's eyes went wide. He saw Naruto. Kai Ubi then bowed down. The Kitsune prophecy has come true. You have willingly bore the child of a powerful ninja. A man who you love. The one who will be the carrier of me. The chosen one Kai Ubi said. Ken had walked over. Karyu saw it and cried. And she said, embracing him. She could feel his life slipping away. He was breathing heavily. I shall be transferring my soul into him Kai Ubi said. Ken held his hand up. Wait. I'm almost dead. Let me do it. It is my punishment for dying on my wife and child. Allow me to summon the death god to do the soul transfer Ken said while coughing up blood. Kai Ubi understood. Ken got up. He kissed his wife one last time, and quickly kissed his son's forehead. Karyu nodded, and prepared Naruto for the transfer. Wait. Who spread those lies? Karyu asked her father. Kai Ubi looked up. It was a shady man, who called himself Arachimaru Kai Ubi. Both Karyu and Ken were not overly surprised by that. The death god had been summoned. It was ripping out Kai Ubi's soul. But Kai Ubi knew it had to be done. The death god placed the soul into Naruto's body. Both Ken and the body of Kai Ubi fell dead. Kai Ubi's body began to vanish. Some of the remaining ninjas came and escorted the new widow back to the village, as well as taking Ken's fallen body. The third Hokag, Suratobi, had to take over his duties again. They burned Ken's body to ashes. Karyu was crying uncontrollably throughout the funeral. But when it was over, she looked up. I will never forget you. Father, and my love. I will raise Naruto as best as I can. That is a promise Karyu said. She smiled as she did that. Over the next few years, she raised Naruto by herself, while working as a nurse at the hospital. She was also good friends with the Achihas. With that, Naruto grew up, having a friend, the youngest of the Achihas, Sasuke. They both trained really hard. 
Naruto even looks up to Sasuke's father as his own. Together, the two young boys managed to master the dragon fire jutsu by the time they were eight. Then, tragedy struck. The Achiha clan was massacred. Sasuke came home one time and he was upset by what he saw. Then, the killer came out. It was his older brother, Itachi. Itachi said about it all being a test and that Sasuke should hate him. Itachi spared his younger brother. Once Karyu heard news about this, she immediately adopted Sasuke. She felt that since he and Naruto were like brothers in the first place, why not be brothers? Life continued as usual for the three. Then, it was the day of the exams. The two boys were 12 years old. This day would be one that would set the actions for the rest of their lives. It was the day of the exams. The day that would determine whether Sasuke and Naruto would become genin. Sasuke had excellent scores, but Naruto's weren't as impressive. They were still good, but not the best. Wake up Naruto Sasuke said. He tried to nudge Naruto, but Naruto wouldn't budge from his deep sleep. He was dead tired. Not usual for the hyper preteen. Let me try a small fox said. That was Naruto's one-tailed pet fox, Sanjay. Sanjay licked Naruto's face. Naruto mumbled something. The alarm clock went off, and Naruto smashed the thing, then fell back asleep. Sasuke sighed. Did you forget that mom is making her special morning ramen today? Sasuke asked. Naruto instantly got up. Damn, I did forget. How could I miss what Naruto said? His voice was cracking up a bit. Sasuke smirked. His voice had already deepened. Sorry to wake you like this, but you normally aren't this lazy Sasuke said, with a smirk. Naruto rubbed his eyes. Bite me. I'll be down in a minute, Naruto said. Sanjay and Sasuke left the room. Naruto got out his clothes. They were dark clothes. A tight black t-shirt and black knee shorts that had red slashes on them. He then pulled back his hair and wrapped a bit of string around it so his long hair could be held back a bit. He rushed downstairs to eat his favorite breakfast. He could easily eat ramen all day. He was a fast ramen eater. Both boys did finish around the same time. Sanjay just had a small piece of raw meat. So boys, how was breakfast? Karyu asked. Both boys gave thumbs up. I'm glad. Just remember though. It would be nice for the both of you to pass, but I won't be upset if you fail. I'm proud of you too, no matter what Karyu said. Her watch alarm beeped. It was set for a specific time that day. Shoot. I'm going to be late. Anyway, good luck Karyu said, kissing both boys on their foreheads. She dashed off to get her Kanachi Jounin uniform before running out. Although she was a Jounin, she usually worked at the hospital if there were no missions to do. The two boys got their stuff and left. What you pulled on Aruka sensei yesterday was hilarious. You actually invented a, called the sexy. Man, that is out of control, Sasuke said. Naruto chuckled at that. He had transformed himself into a beautiful but naked lady that was only covered in clouds. I'm sure the floor will be stained with his nose blood. That will be my highlight for the next few months if anything Naruto says. The exams came up. Everyone had passed. Except for Naruto. They were to create at least three Depelgingers. Naruto managed to make two, but his third one was a dead one. He did try hard. Almost had it. Might as well one of the teachers said. The teacher's name was Mizuki. Naruto shook his head. I refuse to accept that. I will earn it on my own. If I am to become Hokage one day, like my father before me, there are no shortcuts to take, Naruto said. Later, Naruto was feeling depressed. Mizuki then approached him. You have a lot of courage to say that. Most kids would take it. However, there is one thing you could do. Sort of a mission. I hear that somebody is planning to steal a forbidden scroll. I need you to steal it first and meet me outside of Konoha in three hours. It's so I can secure the scroll from falling into the wrong hands Mizuki said. Naruto agreed to the mission. About one hour later, Naruto had stolen the scroll and was reading over it. It contained a Jounin level skill called Shadow Clone. It was a better version of Depelgenger. By the time Mizuki was supposed to come by, Naruto had mastered the move and was using it. However, instead of seeing Mizuki, Naruto saw Aruka. What are you doing with that scroll? Aruka asked. Naruto explained everything. Strange. Mizuki would have told me about this. Unless Aruka said before some chuckling could be heard. Smart as usual. But the damage has been done. Naruto, the Kaiubi brat, has stolen the sacred scroll which I would use. And he'll get blamed. All because I tapped into Naruto's one weakness, his pride, Mizuki said. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain on his ankle, as Sanjay had bitten it. Mizuki screamed in pain. Sanjay then ran off, to beside Sasuke. Bam. Give me the scroll Naruto Mizuki said. Sasuke charged at Mizuki, only to be knocked back. Sanjay, Naruto, and Aruka met the same fate. 
Mizuki then threw his giant four-star shuriken at Naruto, only to have Iruka save Naruto. Naruto then got angry. Sasuke removed the shuriken and bandaged the wound. Don't you dare talk about my grandfather like that. He only targeted this village due to a false rumor spread by Orochimaru. That led to both my grandfather's and father's deaths. For that, anyone who dares say those names or my heritage in vain shall feel pain. Mass Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto shouted. Over 100 Shadow Clones were made and they all went after Mizuki. They hit Mizuki at all reaches. But he fought them off. Rasengan. Naruto shouted. A ball of swirling chakra was rammed into Mizuki's gut, knocking him back and out cold. Naruto could be seen with four tails. Strange. Your fourth tail wasn't supposed to grow for another month, Sasuke said. Hiroki got up. He took out a Konoha head protector and gave it to Naruto. You've earned it. And I'm not going to judge you because you have your grandfather's blood and soul in you. You are you. That's all there is to it, Hiroka said. Naruto equipped the headband. Later, Naruto and Sasuke were explaining everything to Karyu. From the failure to the false mission to the clones to the fourth tale. Very good. You passed despite being given a bad mission. The fourth tale must have sped up due to puberty. Your chakra handling will be off for a little bit Karyu said. Naruto didn't like that. But like everything, he had to live with it. Three weeks have passed since the genin was named. Of all of the class, only nine were allowed to remain as genin. Squad 7, which consisted of Naruto, Sasuke, and a pink-haired Sasuke fangirl called Sakura, plus their elite genin instructor Kakashi, were part of that class. The team managed to work together by taking the two bells and still passing. They then had two weeks of purely D-ranked missions. Now, they had a C-rank mission. To escort a bridge builder called Tizuna back to his home country of Wave. At first, Tizuna and Naruto didn't get along well. However, they were attacked repeatedly. Kakashi said they would continue this mission as C-ranked, but a mission like that is normally B-ranked. Thank you, Tizuna said. But Naruto was cutting his arm open. He had been poisoned. Part of his training was to become immune to certain types of poison, but this was one on a high degree, so he tried to clean it out. Let me help you Kaiubi said in Naruto's head. The effects wore off, and the wound was healed. Better. We should be off now, Naruto said, after his arm was wrapped up. Thanks Gramps. I owe you one Naruto thought. He could feel his grandfather shake its head inside of him. Nonsense. But be careful. There will be worse Kaiubi said. Naruto nodded. Almost at that point, mist had covered the area. Naruto's eyes changed into his fox eyes to see through the mist. Bakashi sensei. Behind you Naruto said. Kakashi turned around with a kunai ready. It hit a giant cleaver like a blade. Kakashi recognized the ninja. Zabuza Momoba Kakashi said. Zabuza had a demonic-like presence to him that everyone felt. Sharingan Kakashi Zabuza said. The two went at it for a few minutes. Kakashi showed that he had a surgically implanted Sharingan, which was a Chiha bloodline limit. Kakashi even copied a few of Zabuza's moves before being trapped in a water prison. Sasuke and Naruto did some awesome teamwork to free Kakashi, but Naruto wasn't done. Sanjay. Sasuke. Now. Naruto said. Sasuke did his dragon breath jutsu while Sanjay unleashed some fox fire. Naruto gathered it together. He created a large fireball. Firebomb jutsu Naruto shouted as he threw the fireball at Zabuza. Zabuza dodged it only to have Kakashi land a few devastating moves. Zabuza was almost ready to die when he fell dead from needles in his neck. And Anbu then came in to retrieve him. Naruto passed out. Naruto. Sanjay and Sasuke said a bit loudly. They were concerned. Naruto had passed out. That fourth tail is still causing disruption, Sanjay quietly said. Sasuke picked up Naruto. They went to Tazuna's house, which was still overseas. But they made it. Tazuna was living with his daughter Tsunami and his grandson, Inari. Now, the two were a bit uneasy with the group. Well, Tsunami had a problem with Kakashi's perversion and his books, while well, Inari just didn't like Naruto. Naruto had said something wrong, which kinda made Inari go off the deep end, so to say. But as Inari was going to be jumped by a couple of bandits, Naruto saved him. That was after Naruto had a talk with a mysterious girl named Haku. Naruto was late to arrive at the bridge where two massive battles were taking place. A third one was taking place, but it was two on one. Sakura was losing that one. Sanjay tried to help, but it was ineffective. Leave Sakura out of this Naruto said. The two that were fighting Sakura stopped. The smallest one stopped and bowed down. Yeah. I told you to not bother. All three are protected by the grandson and carrier of Kaiubi. Not to mention his mother Sanjay said, but the bigger of the two girls knocked Sanjay out. Tell me your names. Allow me to personally send you two to hell Naruto said as he extended his claws. 
The smaller one backed away. Naruto sir. I am Shilo. A half Kitsune. Had I known you were here, I wouldn't have been so brutal. But forgive my teammate Gale. She is an ice dragon, Shilo said. Gale growled. Naruto changed his eyes, and instantly, Gale was writhing in pure pain. Sasuke. Sakura said. She was still heavily injured. Her voice had made Naruto lose his concentration, and Gale was freed. Shilo. If you want to be forgiven, take Sakura and Sanjay out of potential danger. I need to protect my brother, Naruto said, as he ran off. He slid underneath the mirrors and was beside Sasuke. Idiot. You could have destroyed these mirrors from the outside Sasuke shouted. Naruto glared at him. If I'm an idiot, then so are you. I know you would have done the same Naruto said. Sasuke nodded before getting his with some needles. He passed out due to that. Naruto was pissed. Pray to God that he's not dead. But even God won't save you from me. Naruto said. His hair started to glow red. A massive wave of chakra burst from him as he busted the mirrors surrounding him. He then began a massive assault on the ninja before slashing the mask off. It was Haku. It appears that you have defeated me. If I'm defeated, I'm of no use to anyone. A broken tool that must be disposed of, Haku said. Naruto calmed down and shook his head. Don't say such things. No human life is worth tossing away just for the sake of another if it's just being used, Naruto said. He lifted up Haku. Naruto then saw that Kakashi was going to finish off Sabuza. So Naruto broke the ninja's left leg. Haku winced in pain. You deserve a chance to live, Naruto said. He then felt his grandfather's presence defuse from him. They merged their minds together when they both were mad. Naruto. Behind us, Kaiubi suddenly said, Naruto saw through the mist. He saw an army of bandits, plus Gato. Gato was the reason for this mission. A wealthy businessman who controlled the fish, drug, and bad deals industries. The completion of this bridge would have hurt him, so he wanted Tazuna dead. Kakashi sensei Stop. Naruto shouted. Kakashi couldn't stop. He slipped his lightning attack to the side and also hit an ice mirror that Haku had set up. But Tsubuza was still hit badly and was almost mortally wounded. So it would seem that the so-called demon of the mist is nothing more than a cute devil now. These bandits will take care of the rest, Zabuza Gato said. Sanjay and Shilo then came beside Naruto. Sasuke then woke up and followed. Naruto. Your orders. Shilo asked. Naruto smirked. He extended all four of his tails. Shilo. I sense your chakra level isn't in danger. Good. When I give the signal, you and I are to attack. Sanjay, Sasuke, you know what to do, Naruto said. Both Sanjay and Sasuke breathed fire at Naruto, and he turned the two fires into a giant fireball. Of course, some of them were already dead, as Ibuza managed to get to some of them. I'm going to die anyway, take me with it, Ibuza said. Naruto then heard another voice. It was Inari's. Didn't think we could miss this show. Not when our village is at stake, Inari said. Naruto smirked as he threw the giant fireball at the bandits. Shilo noticed that Gale was up and beside her. I think that was the signal Gale said. Shilo smirked and ran to the remaining bandits. She killed the four remaining ones. It was over. Naruto had made a memorial grave for Zabuza outside the village where the giant cleaver sword was placed in the ground. You know Kanoha could always use fine ninjas such as yourself. How would you three be interested in joining? Kakashi asked. Shilo knew her answer. I know that Shilo has already accepted the request. She is part fox. Foxes are very loyal to their kind. I understand. Ice dragons are the same. I'm with Gale. Naruto and the others looked at Haku. She simply nodded. When they left the wave country, Tazuna named the bridge he completed, the Kitsune Memories Bridge. It was in honor of Naruto and the loyalty of the foxes. A couple of months had passed. The seven ninjas had returned to Konoha. The three that worked with Zabuza before had become Konoha Genins and were assigned to Karyu. Nothing overly major was going on, except that Naruto's fifth tail was growing in and he was really getting a hentai mind. Sasuke smirked when Naruto told him this. In fact, that was just now. Well, I guess it's all part of becoming who you are. Maybe your gramps has some sort of influence over this Sasuke said. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. Not a chance. Damn. I remember when my dear Karyu grew in her fifth tail. It was unbelievable how she would just stare at everyone. It was so funny Kaiubi said in Naruto's mind. Naruto chuckled at that. Well, he says it's what happens with the fifth tail Naruto said. Sasuke couldn't help but chuckle at that. Anyways I need to go for a walk. You coming? Naruto asked. Sanjay got up, stretched, and followed. Naruto eventually arrived at his destination. The Yamaki flower shop. He wanted to talk with Ino. Hey Ino Naruto said as he came in. 
He really looked around at the flowers and really noticed how beautiful they really were. Hey there. So, what's going on with Kanoha's favorite annoying four-tailed fox? Ino jokingly said. She then noticed a fifth tail. Nothing much. As you can see, I have another tail. Which is a real problem. It has something to do with girls, Naruto said. Ino was very interested. Early attraction to a bunch of them, right? Ino asked. Naruto nodded. Plus one girl, whom I've had my eye on can't really approach her. I mean, sure I now have some fangirls, Naruto said. Ino chuckled at that. You're talking to a half one. The other half is still with Sasuke, Ino said. Naruto knew that. And Ino, I know you kinda like Shikamaru. Oh well. I just need some advice, Muruto said. Ino shook her head. I wanted to try something with you, Naruto. I was thinking of a false relationship. One where we look like we're a couple, but we really aren't, Ino said. Naruto smirked. Kinda like it. My only concern is whether it turns out to be real. But if we are truly loyal to who we want to be, then I'm all up for it, Naruto said. Ino nodded. Sweet. Gotta spread the rumors a bit, Ino said. Naruto shook his head. Our closest friends should know. Besides, my mom is letting us have a big sleepover, like the whole rookie nine, and Team Fantasia as the new team calls themselves Naruto said. At the sleepover, three nights later, everyone was talking, and stuff. It was time for a game of blackjack, where the five players were Akamaru, Kiba's dog, Sasuke, Ino, Hinata, and Gale. Naruto was hanging around Ino, which was strange. Oh, and the dealer was Sanjay. After a few rounds, everyone was fine, and stuff. A little bit of truth or dare was played. Hinata was on the sidelines though. I kinda have a crush on Haku Kiba. Everyone kinda chuckled at that. Naruto was next, and chose the truth. Was there anyone he was interested in? I'm dating someone. And yes, she is in this room, Naruto said. Akamaru and Sanjay exchanged high fives at that. Sasuke took it there. Don't take this the wrong way Sasuke, but I think these girls deserve a treat. Take off the shirt Naruto said. He had a hard time saying that. Sasuke did that, then it went back to Naruto, who chose a dare. I was hoping you'd say that. Kiss the girl you are dating Sasuke said. Naruto got up and proceeded over to where Ino was and kissed her for about 5 seconds. Everyone was surprised. Now you know what Naruto said. Stuff just simply continued for the night. It was a night for last chances to spend time together, as the Chunin exams were fast approaching. The Akunajikin. A powerful bloodline limit only belonging to the offspring of Kaiubi. Naturally, even Naruto had it. What it does is, when the user touches the blood of somebody who has a bloodline limit, they take all of its abilities. Which comes to explain why Naruto was using the Sharingan during the first part of the Chunin exams. He had touched the blood of Sasuke, gaining the abilities of the Sharingan. Actually, that wasn't entirely true. He had part of it come from Sasuke, and the other part, from Itachi. It sickened him now that he did, but the benefits were helpful. Itachi had spilled some blood after his cousin's suicide. That blood is spilled from his arm when he had a different version of the Sharingan active. The Manjiku Sharingan. Of course, Naruto couldn't activate it until he touched Sasuke's blood after the Sharingan had been activated. That was during the battle with Haku. Oh, and the so-called 10th question of the exam was to test your loyalties and guts. Naruto made a speech that he didn't care if he failed the exam or not. He would never turn his back from a challenge. Now, the remaining teams were in a zone called the Forest of Death. They had to secure two scrolls, one heaven, one earth, and make it to the central tower. Team 7 had a heaven scroll. I see you have the Sharingan now. And you did tell me why you did it a few nights ago, Sasuke said. Naruto smiled a foxy smile. Well, what can I say? If I could give you some of my powers, I would, Naruto said. Sasuke smirked. Sasuke doesn't need any of your stupid Sakura began to yell, before she was started very darkly by the two Sharingan users. Then, Naruto's eyes began to change into their normal blue color, except they had black slits for pupils. Which brings us to Kaiubi's second bloodline power. The Ryujikin. The ability to sense the danger level, persona, age, and various other stats, about your friends, or opponents. Naw. She's all talk, you know. Danger level is very low. No threat. Definitely your number one fangirl. But it seems more than just a crush nowadays, Naruto said. Sakura looked at him in disbelief. You didn't just say what Sakua said. Naruto smirked. Yep. Sakura. I hate to say this actually I don't you got own Sanjay said. Steam could be seen coming from Sakura's head. Could we focus on this mission now? We have to find ourselves an Earth Scroll Sasuke said. Everyone stopped. Then, Naruto froze. What's wrong dope? Sasuke asked sarcastically. Yeah, they called each other names, but only in brotherly love. I have a really bad feeling about this. We should split. 
I'll take a look around to find out. Sanjay, stay with Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke, you know what to do, should I return, Naruto said. One hour later, Naruto had returned. Sexy no jutsu Sasuke said. He transformed into a naked version of a beautiful girl. Naruto's nose began to bleed a little bit before Sasuke transformed back. How wrong? Sasuke-kun shouldn't be hanging around Naruto, Sakura thought to herself. Sanjay then began to bark. So you aren't Naruto, Sasuke said. Naruto transformed into one of the grass ninja. Very good. You saw through it, the ninja said. The grass ninja began a battle with Sasuke. It led to the ninja being very impressed by Sasuke's skills and even marked him by biting his neck. Three commas appeared. Stop right there, Orochimaru said. It was Naruto. He had all five of his tails out. His hair was spiked up. He looked at Orochimaru with the Ryujikin active. Name? Orochimaru. Height 6 feet. Weight. 200 lbs. Hair color. Black. Persona. Creepy is putting it lightly. Goals. To learn all, especially the forbidden ones. Brett level. You really don't want to know. Overall. Orochimaru is one guy you want to stay away from. He is highly sadistic. He was trained by the third Hokage and is one of the three legendary Sanin. That being said, your best option is to run if he lets you. Naruto. You managed to get past my snake Orochimaru said, taking off his false face to reveal it. Sasuke had passed out. Naruto charged up and hit a few blows on Orochimaru. But Orochimaru placed his hand on Naruto's stomach and Naruto's powers sharply decreased. Orochimaru then fled the scene after saying something about the sound obeying him. Henjikin. The Uzumaki bloodline limit. The ability to create and destroy seals at their choosing. Very useful for Naruto after Orochimaru had left. Kaiubi was sealed off from Naruto, but Naruto fixed that. He then tried to take care of Sasuke, but it didn't work. Sorry Sakura. But I'm out of chakra. I need to rest, Naruto said as he fell over. The curse seal that Sasuke had was indeed very hard to remove. A few minutes later, Sakura was in a dire situation. She was surrounded by the three sound ninja and was losing badly. That was when Lee came in. Sakura. You rest up. I'll handle these guys, Lee said. And he tried his best. Even showing off his signature move, the primary lotus whirlwind. But the sound of the ninja was too powerful and knocked him out. Sakura saw that she was in the same position as she was a few minutes ago. Sanjay couldn't even help as she was down for the count. The female sound ninja, Kin, had Sakura by the hair. That was when Sakura realized that she has to rely on herself now. And with that, she cut off her hair and stabbed Kin at the ribs. She then went after Zaku. The two fraught it out, with Sakura making many replacements before actually hitting him. The bandage guy, Dosu, was trapped. Ino's team were there and Skikamaru had Dosu trapped. Zaku was trying to recover from the devastating blow that Sakura gave him. Chouji tried to block him. Ino had run up to Naruto and tried to shake him awake. Once he was awake, Ino whispered something. They still don't have any idea, Ino said. She then embraced Naruto before kissing him. Thanks Ino. I needed what Naruto said as he rose to his feet. A lot of his chakra had returned to him. Sasuke then woke up but he was full of the curse. Sanjay then came up. This power is incredible, Sasuke said. Naruto eyes him. He didn't like it one bit. Sasuke ran up to Zaku and beat the living star out of him. When that was done, he slammed his foot into Zaku's back, paralyzing his arms. Naruto simply dodged all attacks that came by from Dosu. Sanjay then woke up. Sasuke, Sanjay. I think it's time we unleashed it Naruto said. Both Sanjay and Sasuke breathed fire and Naruto expanded the fire to a large fireball that could be seen over the forest. Storm of Supernova all three shouted. The fireball rose, then split into many fireballs, all seeking their way to the sound ninjas. It didn't kill them, as they did escape. Team Fantasia then came in. Are you guys looking for an extra scroll? Haku asked as she passed one to Naruto. Don't worry. It was an extra. Wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to fight you guys again. Of course, this time, on friendlier terms Gale said. Team Fantasia then left. Talked more than expected, Sakura said. Whatever. And hell. Acting can be so troublesome, Shikamaru said. That caught everyone off guard. Oh please. It's obvious Naruto and Ino are faking. If they weren't, Ino would have rushed to Naruto faster. The kiss almost threw me off though, except it wasn't very long, Shikamaru said. Chouji agreed with him. Ino sighed. Alright, you got us. We were faking. But it was only to get a couple people jealous, Naruto said. Team 7 then left. You alright Sakura? Sasuke asked. Sakura nodded. Naruto knew that Sasuke cared for her. 
Well if I know you Sasuke, the plan didn't work on you, as you were one of the targets for Ino. Main, but a target, no less Naruto said. Sasuke smirked. You're right, it didn't work, Sasuke said. The team set up camp for a few days. They did that, to rest up. On the final day, they teamed up with Kabuto, who assisted them in getting a heaven scroll. Then, they entered the tower, and learned the scrolls were summoning scrolls, in which their former, Iruka, appeared, and explained everything about the second part of the exam. The teams that made it to the final round were the Sound, Rookie 9, Fantasia, Kabuto's team, the Sand team, and Lee's team. For this, Karyu was named the Proctor. In the presence of the, and the Hokage, Karyu made her speech. This is the final part of the Chunin exams. From this point forward, it's individual choices. No longer, will it be a team choice. You see, the final part is the main event. A tournament, to be more precise. However, it would seem that we have too many for a standard 8 to 12 man tournament. A prelim round hasn't been made in the past 5 years, so consider it an honor just to make it this far. The prelims will determine who will have their chance to become Chunin, and who won't, Karyu said. Of all the ninjas, Kabuto was the only one who quit. The first match was between Sasuke and one of Kabuto's partners. Sasuke had won his match. Kakashi then went to seal off the curse seal on Sasuke's neck. Sakurai and Ino fought it out, only to wind up in a tie. Team Fantasia faced each other, with Haku walking out the victor. Shino, a bug user, went up against Zaku and defeated him. Tenten, who was a girl and one of Lee's teammates, was defeated by the sand girl, Tamari. Shikamaru defeated the sound girl, Kin. Though she was still reeling from her injuries sustained by Sakura, Shikamaru proved that he is an expert strategist. Then, Naruto was to go up against Kiba. Sanjay. You stay out of this one. I want to make this quick, and if you're in, you'll get hurt Naruto said. Sanjay grumbled for a second before accepting what Naruto had said. The match had begun. Kiba and Akamaru rushed up to Naruto. But Naruto, while waiting, plugged his nose with a clothesline clip. He then dodged Kiba and smirked. He had released a tag. But it wasn't an exploding tag. It was a stink tag. Kiba had smelt it and was all weirded because it was an awful stench. Akamaru had also smelt it and fainted. Damn you. Using cheap tricks Kiba said. Naruto smirked. I did this so I could fight you, hand to hand, Naruto said. They did begin their battle. Kiba was on a powerful offensive, making Naruto hold a defense. Kiba even had Naruto up against the wall. That was when Naruto noticed the torch. Naruto saw an opening and knocked Kiba back. Naruto then quickly made a fireball out of the fire. He tossed it at Kiba as Kiba jumped in the air for a dive attack. Since it hit Kiba's head with some impact, it blinded him. Naruto finished him off with a kick to the gut. Kiba was out. That was good. Thank you, Kiba said. Naruto nodded as Kiba was being helped up by a stretcher. Naruto noticed that his cheek was bleeding. To his surprise, he saw Hinata offering him some medical cream for his single scratch. Thank you, Hinata-chan Naruto said, with an almost undetectable blush. Hinata however, had a deeper blush. Benkuro, one of the sand ninja, faced off against Kabuto's other teammate, and won. Chaoji faced off against Osu, but lost that round. Gara, the most vile and vicious looking of the sand ninja, then faced off against Lee. Lee showed his amazing skills as a tajutsu expert, managing to actually damage Gara. Then, Lee took it up a few notches, by unleashing the fact that he could open five of the eight celestial gates. He had made himself surpass physical limits. But Gara used his sand to crush Lee's bones to win the match. Hinata then faced her cousin, Niji. It looked like Niji was going to win just by playing with her brain when Naruto stepped up. Hinata. Get him. Beat that creep into the ground. Never give up. I believe in you Naruto shouted from the stands. That fired Hinata up and the match began. Naruto kept a close eye on their bloodline limit by Akugan. Ability to see things you can't see with any other eyes. It was the link for the Hayuga family Tajutsu art, Gentle Fist. The Tajutsu was meant to seal off your opponent's chakra openings. And that was what both were doing. Niji then hit a hard hit at the heart, causing Hinata to freeze and cough up blood. Hinata got a few more strikes in, leaving Niji tired, but Niji hit the heart area again just not as hard. She passed out due to that. Your way of the ninja is honorable Hinata. But you are the reason for my hatred. It started with you Niji said, turning around. He knew he had won the match. Naruto knelt down beside Hinata and let a few tears loose. He then covered his hand in her blood and made a fist and looked at Niji. Niji Hayuga. You better pray to God that I'm not your next opponent. Because if you are, you will suffer for this. What if your cousin dies? If she does, I'll tear you to shreds. If you are to die, it will be your fault. I will make sure her soul, if she is to die, makes it to heaven. You thought I would personally drag your pathetic soul to hell. 
you hear me? I will hurt you. Naruto shouted at him. Niji didn't flinch, even though Naruto had all of his tails out. The winners were then told that any of them could be, or not, and it would be held in one month, so that the feudal lords could also watch, plus for the genin to improve. The order of the matches were. Naruto vs Niji. Sasuke vs Gara. Shino vs Kankuro, winner faces Haku. Shikamaru vs Tamari, winner faces Dosu. Everyone had left, except for Naruto, Hinata, and Karyu. Karyu was healing Hinata, so she could live 100. Ayakugan Naruto said. His eyes went white, and veins showed up near his eyes. Successful. Good work Karyu said. Suddenly, Naruto collapsed. Not something good. Karyu checked on him, and noted it was just from exhaustion, and continued to work on Hinata. Naruto had a sudden jolt surge through him, and it woke him up, as if he had a nightmare. Sweating, unstable breathing, and sitting up. He was at home, in bed. Good. I have your attention. My soul is becoming weak Kayubi said. Naruto didn't believe that. Ramps. Don't say what Naruto said. He could feel Kayubi's sorrow. Sorry, my dear grandson, but when Orochimaru placed that seal on me, my soul was tangled up in it. Then you released the seal. But alas, it has weakened me that I only have about two to three months to live. But with that, I want to give you a powerful gift Kayubi said. Naruto let a few loose tears go. This gift will dramatically increase your powers. If you are able to reach the sacred stone on Fox Mountain, then I will give you my final gift. Merging my powers to yours and making you a full-fledged demon Kayubi said. Naruto growled. Is that what you wanted to do with me all along? Naruto angrily said to Kayubi. Not at all. But if you wish to stand a chance against the best of the best, you have to be the best of the best. Being a full demon will recognize you as the new demon king. You will be able to transform into me in my fox form. But you won't change, personality-wise. You will still be you. A boy fox who dreams of becoming the Hokage. And with you being the first demon, it will establish ties between the race of fox demons and Kanoha Kayubi said. Naruto let a few more tears loose. This is the best you can do. You can't retain your soul for too much longer. I'm sorry Naruto said. Don't be. It's not your fault. Maybe it was our destiny that made this happen. Even me and mortals. But it's up to you. Whether you want control of my powers or not is up to you Kayubi said. With that, Kayubi's presence went away. Naruto let a few more tears loose. Karyu, apparently hearing the whole conversation, had come in. No need to explain. From what I take it, dad's soul is dying, Karyu said. Naruto nodded. Karyu sat on the bed and embraced her son. Mom, thank you. And this may sound weird, but could you sing me that lullaby you used to sing for me when I was small? Naruto asked. Karyu just simply started to soothingly sing her lullaby. It had calmed Naruto down to the point when he did fall asleep. When that was over, Karyu walked out and sighed. Dad. You told him about the sacred stone of God. The one that will grant wishes, located at Fox Mountain. You want your grandson, my son, to retain your powers and be a full demon. Fine by me. It's all up to Naruto, Karyu said. She decided to pack things up in case he made the choice. Naruto should have spent his time training for the tournament. But he couldn't shake what news had been given to him. He just walked around the streets of Kanoha for a while, ignoring the states that the civilians kept tossing at him. They were afraid of him. He understood. He was afraid of himself sometimes, but those moments when he was afraid were normally washed away quickly. When he got to the hot springs he inhaled the scent of the women there. He was satisfied by that. Then he noticed a perv. One with long, spiked white hair. Naruto's eyes twitched. Old pervy Jiraiya. One of the legendary Sanin and one of those people who are like a father to me Naruto said. He tossed a kunai at Jiraiya. Jiraiya turned and caught it. He was about to yell when he saw Naruto. Looks like your aim has gotten better, Jiraiya said, walking away from his spot and towards Naruto. And your reflexes haven't worn out yet Naruto replied, the two of them exchanged high fives. Then, Naruto went back into his brooding mood. What's wrong? Jiraiya asked. Naruto sat down. Grandpa Kaiubi is dying, Naruto said. Jiraiya looked worried. Wow. I didn't think that sealed souls could die if the vessel still lived, Jiraiya said. Naruto shook his head. Orochimaru's fault. He's here. He might just attack Kanoha soon. He sealed off Kaiubi's chakra. But Kaiubi's soul was so tangled up that by the time I destroyed the seal, Kaiubi's soul had started to deteriorate, Naruto said. Jiraiya was worried. Damn. This is heavy, Jiraiya said. Naruto looked up. I need some outside advice. Kaiubi said that if I go to Fox Mountain, I can retain all his powers, becoming a full demon. Not that I don't mind, because that won't change who I am, but I don't know. If I don't, he dies. 
Well, he's dead anyways, but the powers won't fade if I am a full demon. What should I do? Naruto asked. Jiraiya smirked. This is up to you. Personally, I would become a full demon. Just hide that fact from everybody, and you should be fine. You are you. That won't change. Do what you feel is right, Jiraiya said. Naruto smiled. Thank you. I will become a full demon then. Oh, and I bet that info wasn't for free, Naruto said. Jiraiya shook his head. Just let me guard the house while you're gone. I need a place to stay, and my best apprentice's house would be the perfect place. Of course, it's up to your mom, and all Jiraiya said. Later Karyu was in her fox form. Naruto was all packed and ready to go. Remember Jiraiya, no ladies or funny business, and don't cross your fingers at me, Karyu said. Jiraiya nodded. Naruto hopped on with the supplies. We'll be back in two weeks, Karyu said, as she ran off. It took one week to get there. They were at the center of Fox Mountain. That was when a female, seven-tailed woman, came out. Her name was Solace. Mom. I missed you, Karyu said, as the two hugged each other. Karyu was in her human form. She explained everything. Solace let a few tears loose. The know that I will never see my beloved again hurts. I know you understand, dear Solace said, leading them to the stone of the gods. Two wishes were allowed to be made. He knew what his first one was. And he could feel his soul merging with Kai Ubi's. He felt the extreme torture. But he eventually recovered. He still looked like he was before, except the hair was longer and more spiked. His claws were a bit sharper, but he still looked the same. For his second wish, he cut himself and let three drops of blood drip onto the stone. He had wished for a broadsword, which only he could use, and was to keep him at bay. It was granted. Next day. Sorry, Grandma. But the Chunin exams are in three weeks. But hey, you've helped me out a lot. And besides, I can summon foxes now. Though Jiraiya wanted me to summon toads. But I can do both, Naruto said. Solace hugged her grandson. Take care of you too, Sala said. Tatu waved goodbye. T. Karyu and Naruto began their journey home. Naruto was glad to be back in Kanoha. He was very confident that he was far stronger than anyone else in the tournament. Thus, he decided on another training method. Study past tapes. Particularly the ones of his dad, when he did this many years ago, and one of Karyu's, one she did only about seven years ago. Also, he was now able to summon both toads and foxes. On his first attempt, he managed to summon the boss frog, and that made Jiraiya proud. But the most important thing about this part of the tournament that he learned was keeping it together. The ones who were calmer and more strategic and powerful became Chuanans. Right now, one day before the tournament, he was talking with the Hokage's grandson, Kinohimaru. Kinohimaru was only seven years old. So, what do you have in mind for the Hayuga? Kinohimaru asked. They were at Naruto's favorite ramen stand. Kanohimaru was almost like a little brother to Naruto. Learn why he hates the main house so much, study gentle fist, and at the same time, avoid it, Naruto said. Kanohimaru smiled. If anyone can win this tournament, it's you. After all, a future Hokage must be better than the rest. No offense to the others though. They're good, but not Hokage material. Not like us, at least Kanohimaru said. Naruto smirked. The two finished up their ramen. Next day, Naruto found himself heading towards the arena when he saw Hinata. Hey Hinata he said. Hinata blushed and waved hello. Naruto came up. How are you feeling? Naruto asked. Hinata nodded. Good. Mom's healing did the trick. I couldn't bear what would happen if it didn't, Naruto said. Hinata was surprised. W what that SSS supposed to mean? Hinata asked. Naruto smiled a foxy smile. Sanjay was at his feet. To put it bluntly, he likes you Sanjay said. Naruto picked him up before whipping him into a tree. Idiot. I was supposed to tell her that. Yeesh Naruto said. Hinata blushed even more. Wow. I never knew. I also like you Hinata said. But she looked down. Sweet. Oh, and the relationship with Ino it's false. We just did that to make people jealous. Though I don't really see you as the jealous type Naruto said. His watch beeped. He had to run off to start his match. Wait Hinata said. Naruto turned around and was surprised when Hinata kissed him. For good luck. Kick Niji's ass Hinata confidently said. She had some more confidence in herself now. Naruto did make it to the grounds in time. He was face to face with Niji. Be lucky that Hinata is alive. And I'll bet you weren't even scared by my words. Rest assured, I'm no pushover. You won't defeat me, Niji. And by the end of the match, hopefully, I will have realized why you hate Hinata so much, Naruto said. Niji smirked. It was because of her, my father was dead. On her third birthday, Kanoha had a celebration to mark a treaty it had made with Cloud Village. I was cursed with this Niji said, revealing the caged bird's seal on his forehead. 
A few days later, the rep tried to kidnap Hanada. But my damn uncle killed the rep. Cloud asked for my uncle dead and brought them to them, but instead, they got my father. Because of her, I grew up fatherless, despising something I'm sworn to protect. If it weren't for this damn seal, I would have pulled off an Itachi. Now you know what Niji said. The match had begun. Niji tried to strike Naruto with a gentle fist, but Naruto dodged each one before landing a powerful kick to his gut. Over the month, I'm the one who's probably changed the most. You see this sword. It's keeping my demon blood at bay. And I'm sure you know about me being a half-demon. Naruto sai Niji got up. He tried to strike Naruto again, but instead was struck in the neck by Naruto. You hit a chakra coil. How? Niji said. He looked up once he recovered and gasped. He couldn't believe it. We all knew Naruto had it, but Niji didn't. He saw that Naruto was using the Byakugan. Like my toy. I thought you might be surprised. It's not every day that somebody outside the Hyuga name has the legendary Byakugan Naruto said. Niji recovered from the blow to the neck. How? Niji simply asked. Naruto smirked. Sanjay also smirked. One of his two fox bloodline limits. He has the ability to acquire other bloodline limits. He already has the Sharingan with him. Oh, and you have to touch blood, Sanjay said. Niji then remembered when Naruto had made the blood oath one month ago. Damn it, Niji said. Suddenly, the veins around Naruto's eyes turned red. The Sharingan appeared in his eyes. You're right. I am toying with you, Naruto said, as he simply walked up to Niji. Niji smirked. He tossed a flash bomb, then hit Naruto with the 64 chakra point ceiling. I knew you were going to do that. Having both Sharingan and Byakugan activated at the same time does this. The ability to see through things is so powerful that it can even be seen into the mind, Naruto said. Naruto then managed to unseal all of his chakra coils. Damn. You must have godlike eyes, Niji said. Naruto nodded. He then went onto the offensive. It was a thrashing. But as Niji was on the ground, bleeding, Naruto began to talk again. I think I'll call them Kamikigan. God's eyes. Niji. You have to learn that nothing is perfect. People hate each other and love at the same time. I hated you when you almost killed Hinata. Why, because I love her, Naruto said. Niji was shocked. And she loves me back, Naruto said, as Niji got up. Naruto thrusted Niji, but he spun around. He did the Hyuga divination spin. Naruto felt his hand was torn up. Nice. But to answer your question, it wasn't enough. Shadow clone Jutsu Naruto said. He created a few clones. Niji spun again. He knocked off the clones that came at him, but an explosion was made from under him. It launched him into the wall. Naruto then came out of a hole and walked up to Niji. I give you credit. You are fighting for what you believe in. Normally, I wouldn't play such mind games. I prefer to give an old-fashioned beatdown. After the speech you gave earlier, I understood why you wanted to kill Hinata. But it doesn't mean I have to like it, Naruto said, while having one hand around Niji's neck. Naruto then jumped high into the air, turned to face down, and crashed both him and Niji into the ground. Niji was almost knocked out while Naruto rose up. Peryu was still the proctor. She checked on Niji and declared the match over. A few minutes later, Niji was in the hospital room. Hiashi, the head of the Hyuga clan, was there. Hiashi explained that his twin brother, Niji's dad, had willingly sacrificed himself in Hiashi's place that day. Naruto was also there. What do you want? Hiashi demanded. Naruto smirked. You shouldn't treat your future Hokage that way Naruto said. He moved over to Niji. I know Niji. I now know the truth as well Naruto said, with the Kamikigan still active. He then shut it off, having his eyes return to their normal color. Naruto smirked. Regardless of what you say Hiashi said, before Naruto glared at him. You will never consider me as Hokage. Guess what? Deal with it. And deal with the fact that Hinata is my girlfriend. And if you try to intervene, I will kill you and anyone else. Got it, old man Naruto said, as he withdrew his sword. Hiashi backed away. Naruto then put it back. While doing that, he reactivated and sealed off the chakra coils in Hiashi's arms. Niji. Take off your headband protector, Naruto said. Niji reluctantly did so. Naruto then lifted up the wrappings around the head and pressed a finger to it. He had to deactivate the Kamikigan again. The cage bird seal slowly vanished. Then Naruto placed a new seal, but on Niji's shoulder. It was a Celtic cross. Across it, it read loyalty. You are a branch member of the Hyuga house, but have more control. No longer will any of the others try to weaken you, just by mere thought Naruto said. Niji smiled. Naruto then looked at Hiashi. Forgive me sir, but wasn't it the Uzumakis who invented the seal? I did that because he has earned his chance to succeed. He's earned some freedom. 
He will still protect the main house, but is less of a slave Naruto calmly said. Naruto then walked by. When he was going to exit, Haishi tried to attack him, only to have Naruto grab his wrist. One day soon, old man, I hope we can have a civilized conversation. How about after this tournament? You name the place. I want to prove that I'm worthy of Hinata, Naruto said. Hiashi then smiled. You may have been sadistic out there, but oh well. In life, you must take care of things in whatever ways possible, Hiashi said. Naruto smirked as he turned around and let go. That, plus Niji tried to kill her, so I messed around with him. I wanted him to feel pain. Now that he has, I hope we can be friends, Naruto said, while well smiling. Niji nodded at that. Naruto then noticed that Shikamaru's match was up next. It was due to the fact that Sasuke's match was postponed and Kankuro gave up. Well, Shikamaru did, but apparently, he used many good strategies. Naruto met up with Iruka. Nice going out there Naruto. You showed excellent timing and precision. I can almost guarantee that you will be, Iruka said. Naruto smiled at that. Everything had happened so quickly. The sound and sand teamed up to fight against Konoha, but struck one Sasuke's match with Gara had gotten underway. A giant two-headed snake was terrorizing the village, as well as some of the sand and sound ninja. Even some at the arena. Gara had run off and Sasuke ran to fight him. Naruto stayed behind to clear up the sand and sound that was in the arena. Good work Naruto. Improvement and you are two things worth matching Kakashi said. Naruto smirked. Whatever. I've seen what Gara is like. He's a born killer. Worse than I am. He kills to acknowledge his existence. No matter how much you've improved Sasuke, Gara is still very strong. I will not allow anything to happen to my brother, Naruto said. Sakura was already up, as was Shikamaru. Thing was, a sleeping spell was placed over the audience. Naruto, Shikamaru and Sakura knew how to dispel it. Kakashi then summoned a small dog, named Pakan. Mission time then. Find Sasuke and bring him back. If you wind up getting into a fight with Gara, leave, Kakashi said. Not a chance. I can take Gara no problem. And Sakura doesn't complain. I'm probably one of the strongest and most definitely lethal ninja you will ever see, Naruto said. Sakura nodded. The five, Naruto, Sanjay, Shikamaru, Sakura, and Pakan, left. Sanjay and Pakan were able to find the two cents and tack them down. But they were stopped by a scene on top of the stadium. Naruto looked at it with the Kamikigan. Damn. Hokage is facing off against Orochimaru. He was disguised at the Kazakiage. This isn't good. Not even I can take on Orochimaru yet. I fear the worst Naruto said. He was panicking. But they left. Of course, not without fighting some more bad ninja. The five caught up to Sasuke, who was trying to fight Gara, Except Gara was different. He was slightly transformed. The fine young prey Gara snarled as his giant sand claw slammed Sakura into a tree and bound her there. She was out. You best better defeat me if you wish to see her live, Gara said. Sasuke was out of chakra. The curse was showing. Defeat him quickly. I don't want to see an important friend die, Sasuke said. Naruto nodded. He made a mass shadow clone and they all attacked Gara. Eventually, he was covered in his demon form. Then, Naruto took a kunai and did a modified version of 1000 years of pain. He had attached an explosive scroll. It badly hurt Gara that he got enraged. He grew to a big height. But as he did that, Naruto was in pain. Dope. What's going on? Sasuke impatiently asked. Naruto roared. His tails were shown clearly and his six tail grew in. Naruto then charged up to Gara and hit him with a giant fireball. Naruto then summoned the boss toad. Yo man. I need your help Naruto said. The boss toad wasn't responding. I did say I would make you my subordinate, but only after you have a drink with me, the boss toad said. You'll have to wait on that. Kanoha is in danger. And one of my closest friends is in danger. I need your help Naruto said. The boss toad agreed with that and he and the giant raccoon demon version of Gara wrestled it out. Naruto unsheathed his sword and channeled a mass amount of chakra into it. Not enough. Sanjay. Naruto said. Saje breathed fire into the sword. Sasuke then got up. You're not doing anything without some help. Dragon fire breath jutsu Sasuke shouted and he too breathed fire onto the sword. It was radiating a violent amount of chakra. Naruto smirked. He jumped up high. High enough that he was above Gara. He then slashed down. L slash Naruto shouted. The slash was powerful enough to wipe out half of Gara before the sand regenerated. Naruto landed on top of the boss toad. Gara's human figure was shown before he put himself to sleep. The demonic raccoon was now under the control of the demon within Gara, Shukaku. We need to hold the demon still. I'm going to transform into something with fangs and claws. 
Just think of the being with it the boss toad said. Naruto knew already, as the boss toad transformed into Kaiubi. After dodging a few sand blasts, Shukaku was held still by the boss toad. Naruto jumped and rammed himself into Gara. It was a headbutt. It woke Gara up and caused the demon to vanish into a giant pile of sand. Naruto held his sword at Gara's throat. Gara, Enough is enough. Killing to know you are alive is wrong. People do care about you. Tamari and Kankuro are proof. If you tried, you would have friends. I was almost down your path, but I chose not to be like that. It's not too late for you, Naruto said. He then put away his sword. Sakura was freed, and Sasuke was holding her, as she was still out. Naruto quickly looked at some water, so see his reflection. He was cut up and bruised. But he smiled. Let's go, Naruto, Sasuke said. Naruto followed him. Next day, after the attack failed, a memorial service was held. Hirachimaru had killed them. It saddened everyone. Naruto held back his tears for a few minutes. He couldn't believe he was gone. No one could. Later, in the tower, Naruto and Jirai were called in. The council called Naruto first. It would seem like you are different. Please tell us one of the council members said. Naruto smiled. Kayubi's soul is gone. My grandfather merged its soul with mine so that I could take his place. I am as powerful as him, but I'm still me. I am now a full demon. But don't fear me. The only people who should fear me are my enemies. I will protect Konoha until the day I die, Naruto said. The council was impressed. Well with the way you handled yourself at the exams, you did well. Everyone's decision was unanimous. This secret of yours will not leave this room until you are ready to tell everyone. We will consider you as Hokage one day in the future, as you have the qualities to be one. But to the decision congratulations Mr. Yuxakami. You are an official Chuan and another council member said, as Naruto was handed his vest. He put it on right away. He smirked. And Jiraiya. We were wondering if you would like to become Hokage, since we need one another council member said. Jiraiya shook his head. I'm not fit for the job. But there is another who is. Namely that of my female comrade, Tsunade Jiraiya. Naruto nodded. I'll search for her, if I'm able to take Naruto with me Jiraiya said. The council agreed. Next day, Naruto was packing for his trip. He was determined to find Tsunade. Man. I hope Tsunade's in the next town. Sure, practicing and trying to perfect this has been all good, but damn it, I miss Konoha, Naruto said, while slicing down a tree. He then turned them into logs, to be used for a fire. You miss your family Jiraiya said, writing on some paper. Naruto smirked. Yeah. Mom's been way too good to me. And Sasuke, I'm concerned about him. He's been acting weird. Since the curse mark. But he really cares for Sakura, and that's a good thing. But there is another reason Naruto said, as he started the fire. He then made a successful Rasengan. Good work my boy. But who is the someone? Jiraiya asked, smirking. If you're guessing it's a girl, you're right. Namely that, of Hinata Hayuga Naruto said, tossing up an unused log and using the Rasengan to more or less, cut it into two. Jiraiya was shocked. Whoa. You're in for one scary roller coaster, Jiraiya said. Naruto smirked. You forget. I'm a demon. A ninja demon. Demons are dangerous and ninjas live in danger. Besides, he's seen my demonic side anyways. He is a coward at heart. Trained only to care for his family's rep and not for his family. Hinata is above him and she will become a fine ninja as she will become my fine wife. Unless things don't work out, Naruto said. Jiraiya sighed. Well, can't say this is good, but at least you know. Now I know why you haven't been ridiculing me for writing my books Jiraiya said. Naruto chuckled. Do reasons. Hinata is hot, but I still think other girls are hot, and too, this Naruto said, performing sexy. Jiraiya had a nosebleed before Naruto turned back to normal. Next night, Naruto and Jiraiya were in a town. Naruto's shoulder was really throbbing, as about two weeks ago, they were attacked by Itachi. Itachi worked for this organization, called Akatsuki. They were demon carrier hunters. Sasuke had shown up, only to be knocked out. Ouch. My shoulder is acting up, Naruto said. It had been four months. Naruto's birthday was coming up soon. Deal with it until I can treat it. We're going to a bar and grill, Jiraiya said. They walked into the closest one. Naruto looked around. He then was surprised that he spotted Tsunade. Drunk as ever though. Her assistant, Shizun, was with her. Naruto pointed out the two women and they walked over. Tsunade was around 50, but she kept up to make her look younger. She managed to acknowledge the two men when Jiraiya brought up the topic of her being. She broke her shot glass. Not interested. The old man died to save Konoha. The name of Hokage is a load of crap Tsunade said. She then saw a very angry Naruto who was about to grab her when his shoulder was stained so much that the stitching opened up. Don't ever say that. 
Being Hokage means respect you've busted your ass for, your entire life. I'm not going to be Hokage now, but I will one day. That is my goal. And if you have a problem with having a chance to be, then maybe, I don't even want to know you, Naruto said, forming the. Sanjay then climbed onto the table. Naruto you're bleeding Sanjay said. Tsunade froze up. She was afraid of blood. But she regained her composure. You managed to form the Rasengan. Not mastered though. Tell you what. In one week, come back. Let me see if you mastered the Rasengan. If not, I won't go back to Konoha. But if you do, I will, because you do have a way of convincing people. Oh, and you leave and get my prize necklace Tsunade said. Naruto smiled, before the pain sunk in. Fair enough. Tsunade, since I know you're afraid, can I have a look at my shoulder? Itachi Uchiha really screwed it up, Naruto said. The five were up in a hotel room that Jiraiya had rented for him, Sanjay, and Naruto. Shizune healed the shoulder entirely. The week passed by quickly. Apparently, Arachimaru had made an offer to Tsunade about bringing her loved ones back to life. But instead, she tried to kill him. Kabuto stopped it. Naruto, Shizune, and Jiraiya showed up. A battle began. Jiraiya tried to take on Arachimaru, but despite his handicap, Arachimaru held his own. Kabuto faced off against Naruto. Naruto hit him with a perfect Rasengan, but Kabuto wasn't hurt that much. No matter how hard you try, it's almost impossible to kill me. I can regenerate lost cells with my chakra Kabuto said. Naruto then unsheathed his sword. Sanjay tried to tackle Kabuto, but was left with a giant slash across his back. Sanjay was bleeding a lot. Naruto dropped his sword out of shock. After Tsunade had heard what Kabuto could do, she joined up with the fight. Kabuto helped summon Manda, the snake boss. Jiraiya had summoned the toad boss, and Tsunade had summoned the slug boss. The three san and fought it out until Naruto could be seen on top of Manda, with the Kamikigan active. He zeroed in on Kabuto. Although Shizune was tending to Sanjay, that didn't stop Naruto's true demonic powers from being unleashed. With just the mere movement of his hand, he had slapped Kabuto off of Manda, then began to throw fireballs. Then, he felt a sharp pain in his neck. Arachimaru had bitten him. Trying to make me your next vessel, instead of Sasuke. Not going to work Naruto said, as the curse marks were spreading at a rampant rate. Naruto then revealed all six of his tails, he then began to seal off chakra coils on Manda, who steadily became weak, and was defeated. But Arachimaru had managed to shove his snake sword through Tsunade, but Tsunade used a call Genesis regeneration, and healed herself. Naruto was then in front of Tsunade. I snakes come Naruto said, blasting back Arachimaru with just mere chakra. He. You say you wish to become Hokage. That title is crap, Arachimaru said, before being hit in the stomach, but an older version of Tsunade. Don't you dare say that. Naruto will be my successor for sure, or I am not the new Hokage Tsunade said. Naruto heard that, and calmed down. But Jureya, he was losing against Kabuto. Mind you, Tsunade had put a drug in his drink, to render his chakra almost unusable. I have some unfinished business with you, Naruto said, as he grabbed onto Kabuto's neck. But next thing he knew, he saw a sword sticking out of Naruto's shoulder, and Naruto had let go, the sword retracted. It was Arachimaru. The two left instantly. Oh, and Sanjay was up. But Naruto passed out. He woke up in the hotel room. His shoulder was healed again. You should be thanking me, Tsunade said. Naruto was surprised. Thanks. But aren't you afraid of blood? Naruto asked. Tsunade smirked. Not anymore. I'm more afraid of you when you're pissed off. You nearly destroyed a lot of the forest, and we weren't near it. You've been out for a week BTW, and Sanjay has been dragging your sword, claiming only demons can carry it. Namely you and him, Tsunade said. Naruto was happy that Sanjay was alright. Good. I'm sorry to have scared you, but my demonic blood boiled when I saw Sanjay out. He's like a brother. Any family hurt will be avenged, Naruto said. It took them one week to get back to Konoha. Just in time for Naruto's 13th birthday. Oh, and he managed to get rid of his curse mark, due to it being on him, he could remove it more easily. But it had only been a month since Naruto had returned. He went on a couple of missions, succeeding in them all. But one day, Hiyashi Hayuga decided to come to the Uzumaki house. Needless to say, that did surprise Karyu. I wish to talk with Naruto, Hiyashi said. He tried to sound friendly, and it actually worked. Karyu led Hiyashi through the house, to the training grounds where Naruto was currently at. The Ashi was surprised to see Naruto struggling. Mind you, Naruto was using massive weights to weigh his arms and legs down while she swung his mighty sword. Naruto. The Ashi Hayuga would like to talk with you, Karyu said, before leaving. Naruto stopped and took off the weights. I did come, like you told me to a few months ago he Ashi walked up. He was still shorter than the Hayuga leader, but wasn't scared. I remember that. 
It was due to me wanting to date Hinata, Naruto said. Hiyashi smirked. Of course. I'll admit, you showed that you are more than just a brat at the exams. You were actually able to defeat Niji Hiyashi. Naruto smirked at that. Yeah. This demon didn't even break a sweat, Naruto said. This puzzled Hiyashi. Much like everyone else, he was under the assumption that Naruto was a half-demon and a demon carrier. Naruto noticed the confused look. If I was still half-demon, it wouldn't have been so easy for me to defeat Niji. I had to merge my soul with Kaiubi. And really, once you get to know my grandfather, he was a gentle demon who was powerful and easily enraged. Arachimaru used Kaiubi to cause damage in Kanoha. Arachimaru then tried to cut off the connection between the two of us, and that caused Kaiubi to deteriorate. I had to merge my soul, or his powers, along with his bloodline limits, would be lost forever, Naruto said. Hiyashi understood. That makes me a bit more uneasy, Hiyashi said. Naruto understood. I know. I'm not even sure of myself. That's why I had this sword made for me. It's a way to suppress my demonic rage to a point. But if I'm not carrying it or holding on, I become a madman. You can just ask Arachimaru or not, Naruto said. Hiyashi smirked. You're full of surprises. But what really disturbs me the most is the fact you have Byakugan. It's the Hyuga bloodline limit, Hiyashi said. Naruto shuddered. I didn't intentionally get it. Rather Niji tried to kill Hinata at the prelims, and using Hinata's blood, I made a blood oath to thrash him. Needless to say, I thrashed him. I had forgotten that my Kaiubi bloodline limit, Akunajikin, was always active. Just by touching the blood or saliva of another, I can gain their bloodline limits. Which is why I have the Kamikigan. I also have the Sharingan, and I use the two together, Naruto said. Hiyashi nodded at that statement. Okay then. I have just one question. How much do you care for Hinata? Because believe it or not, she is my daughter, and I love her with all of my heart. I just have to be tough on her, due to the clan rules Hiyashi said. Naruto looked at the ceiling. I care for her a lot. She isn't like most girls. She's down to earth. It started out as a crush, to admiration, to love. I will die for her. I will give up my demon blood as many times over as it takes, for her. But I can't say much for the Hyuga clan. I respect it due to Byakugan and why you want to keep it within the family, but I don't have to like everything about it, Naruto said. The Ashi extended his hand. Naruto shook it. You just better remember those words should something bad happen to Hinata, Hiyashi said, before exiting, but before he left the training room, he stopped. No one else in the family knows what you did to Niji. But I do thank you for facing him. It has made him lighten up, Hiyashi said. Naruto smirked, as Hiyashi left. Karyu then entered. What was that all about? Karyu asked. Naruto smirked. I think I was given approval to date Hinata Naruto. Karyu scowled. And what about Ino? Karyu said. Naruto chuckled. False relationship. Her idea of making people jealous. Didn't work, Naruto said. Karyu then smiled. She understood now. Naruto, over the course of two months, had noticed Sasuke's behavior becoming darker than normal. Naruto didn't like this. It scared him. Not to mention that he smelled Sasuke on Sakura. A lot of that scent. Plus another scent he wasn't familiar with. One day, after a mission, while Sasuke was recovering, Naruto had to talk to Sakura. Sakura what has Sasuke done to you? Naruto asked her. She was shocked to hear that. Nothing. I swear Sakura said. Naruto saw through her lies. Don't make me use my Kamikigan on you. I will find out. I can smell Sasuke all over you. And since his attitude has become darker than normal, I'm concerned, Naruto said. Sakura looked up, then looked back at Naruto. If you're thinking he raped me, you're wrong. Though we did sleep together once, during our last mission Sakura admitted. Naruto eased up. Okay. I'm sorry for approaching you like I did. But damn it Sakura. You're like a sister to me. I just needed to know what Naruto said. Then it hit him. What if this other scent was an indication that she was pregnant? He was about to say something, when Sasuke walked out. Naruto. I challenge you to a fight Sok said. He was ready for a fight. Naruto smirked. I was hoping you'd say that eventually Naruto said. The two walked to the roof of the hospital. The fight was good. They were even. Sasuke's Shiori and Naruto's Rasengan nearly collided. Sakura pleaded to stop, but the fight was only stopped when Kakashi and Karyu grabbed the two boys. Later, Sasuke was attacked by the Sound Four, but was invited to the Sound Village and to work under Rachimaru. But Sakura and Naruto they were at the ramen stand. Surprisingly, Naruto was outclassed by Sakura. Now Naruto knew she didn't eat ramen that much, so he had to bring it up. But before that. I'm worried about Sasuke. I'm afraid he might leave Konoha. Leave his team. Sakura said sadly. Naruto sighed. He won't. He's better than that Naruto said. 
Sakura believed him. They continued eating until Naruto suddenly stopped. Sakura noticed this. Sakura. Promise me that tomorrow you'll visit Tsunade for a checkup, Naruto said. Sakura was surprised by this. Naruto then looked at her. I think you might be pregnant with Sasuke's kid Naruto said. Sakura blushed at that. She didn't believe it. And Naruto saw that. Out of nowhere, an Anbu ninja then came from behind them to deliver a note to Sakura. It had been said that her parents died in combat. She began to break down. She then left and tried to go after Sasuke. When she found him, she explained what had happened and begged him not to go. But he turned around to face her. He then kissed her before knocking her out and placing her on a nearby bench Sasuke then left Konoha. Shikamaru, who had recently been upgraded to Chunin, was taking a rather early morning walk. That was when he noticed Sakura. He woke her up. After a minute, she realized something. Oh no. Sasuke left last night she said, almost breaking down. This, of course, was reported to Tsunade as quickly as possible. Naruto was already there and almost broke something, he was so mad. Amity shouted, slapping the wall. The paint on his head had cracked a bit. Tsunade dismissed that. Here is what we'll do then. Shikamaru, Naruto, this is an air rank mission to bring Sasuke back. No doubt, escorts will be with him, so you need all the manpower you can get. Gather as many available genin within one hour. Then, meet at the front gate, Tsunade said. Shikamaru was about to leave when Naruto spoke up. Tsunade. I would like you to please give Sakura a checkup, Naruto said. Sakura had hoped Naruto would forget about it. Tsunade agreed. Shikamaru had gotten Chouji first. Shikamaru had explained that he was best friends with Chouji, and the two worked quite well as a team. Kiba was around, and they recruited him as well. Huh? Kiba said, as he looked up. A winged creature was flying around in the sky. Naruto recognized who it was and jumped to meet it. It was actually Gale. Yo Gale. We have an important mission. You want to come? Naruto shouted from the rooftop. Gale flew to the roof and smirked. Love to the ice dragon said. Naruto then noticed that they were on top of the main building of the Hyuga Manor. Hiashi had walked up there. What are you two doing up here? Hiashi asked. Naruto looked at the Hyuga leader. Sorry, sir. We didn't know which roof we landed on. But now that you're here, there is an important mission, and I'm gathering some genin. If it's okay, I'd like to take Niji with us for this mission, Naruto said. Hiashi smiled. Of course. It's a dangerous one, right? Hiashi asked. He was wondering why Naruto didn't ask for Hinata. Oh yeah. Highly dangerous. Naruto told Niji to meet at the front gate in half an hour. Gale and Naruto then left. Altogether that had been gathered at the gate where Shikamaru, Naruto, Kiba, Chouji, Gale, and Niji. Sakura then showed up. You guys have to bring him back she said. They all agreed to that. Sakura then hugged Naruto in a sisterly hug before telling him in a faint whisper that he was right. It had taken two days for the group to catch up to the sound ninja. But each of the sounds took on one of the others. Choiji was first to fight one on one, then Niji, Shikamaru, then Kiba. Then, another figure appeared from an open field. He called himself Kimimuro. Gale smirked. It's my time to fight Naruto. You take care of Sasuke, while I take care of this lame ass Gale said. Naruto ran for it. Sanjay wasn't with Naruto. Which was fine, as Naruto eventually realized it would be a rough fight. Especially since he had just found him. You've finally shown up. Let's finish our fight from a couple days ago, Sasuke said. Naruto nodded. He took out his sword, only to place it on the ground. How amusing. You never let that sword go, due to your demon blood. Wise choice to go all or nothing against me Sasuke said. Naruto rushed up to him so that he was face to face. More like unwise. I have seen what I am like. I am a killer. Almost killed your soon-to-be master and his assistant. I promise to bring you back to Konoha and I will, Naruto said. They began their fight. And they went all or nothing against each other. Punches, kicks, various. It was awesome. What I never understood is that all your life, you've been a half-demon and never needed a suppressor. Now all of a sudden, you do. Intriguing Sasuke said as he was in Curse LV2. Naruto was letting his demon blood boil while having some control. Simple. I'm not a half-demon anymore. I've made the transition to a full-fledged demon, Naruto said. He began to thrash Sasuke. Sasuke then came up with a lot of strength to form a powerful Naruto did the same with Rasengan. This ends here they both said. They thrust at each other, attacks colliding. A large explosion happened. Naruto being on the blunt of it. Sasuke got up, reformed to normal, and saw Naruto. Ironically, Naruto was near his sword. Naruto grabbed it and sheathed it before panting hard. Such power Naruto said as Sasuke was over him. Dear brother, how does it feel to lose? 
Sasuke evilly said. Naruto smirked. I know I've lost the battle. I failed to kill you, like I intended, Naruto said. Sasuke gasped. I had every intention of bringing you back alive. But I needed to kill you, so it would be easier. I was going to take you to Fox Mountain and revive you. Oh, and Sakura might be pregnant, Naruto said. He passed out. Sasuke smirked to leave Naruto. Naruto, my brother. I will find a different way to get the Manjuku Sharingan. I will not kill you. You're too important to me, Sasuke said. Naruto woke up the next day in the hospital. Sakura was beside him as well as Hinata. Naruto rose up. Hey Hinata said. Sakura simply smiled at that. Sakura. I'm sorry, Naruto said. Sakura shook her head. Hinata knew what this was about, so she left for a minute. It's not your fault. You did promise to bring him back. Thing was, you never truly stated when. As long as I get to see him again, I'm fine, Sakura said. Naruto smiled as he laid back down. Every muscle in his body still ached. Oh. And it turned out you were correct, Sakura said solemnly. Naruto smirked. Sakura left and Hinata came in. You should be more careful. Not even demons should push themselves that hard, Hinata said. Naruto chuckled at that. I will never be careful. If I was careful, I would never get anything done. I'm reckless and playful by nature. It's just who I am, Naruto said. Hinata smiled at that. I just feel bad for you. You lost your brother to that snake, Hinata said. Naruto sighed. That's not going to stop me. I will improve. I will become the most powerful ninja in the world if I have to. I will rest today, continue training tomorrow one thing at a time though. First thing being I want to know the 64 point chakra sealing technique. Since I have Byakugan, I should be able to learn it, even if it's just based on hard work, Naruto seriously said. Hinata nodded. He was full of determination now. He had new goals. To become the most powerful ninja in the world. Though that was going to be a challenge for sure. Shino, the bug user, had suggested that they look for a rare bug called the scent bug. Apparently, its sense of smell was better than Naruto's Kibas, Akamaru's, and Sanjay's. They weren't quite in the forest yet, but they were sleeping. Naruto noticed that Hinata was missing. Now, he said he would protect her, so he went out to search for her. Of course, he managed to catch her scent and was able to find her near a waterfall, sort of dancing. He could tell, she had no clothes on, much to his delight. He watched her. She must be practicing a new move or something. Good. A true ninja never gives up on things important. Speaking of importance, I better get some meditation, Naruto thought. He started to meditate. He figured he would try to expand his range of divination. He consistently had weights on and that trained his body to be faster. His mind was able to expand his divination range. He was easily able to locate where his comrades were. Kiba and Shino were about one kilometer away, back at the camp they had set up. Well, one noticed Shino was starting to come closer. 1.5 km was his max for now, and he figured a 2 km was great. Naruto got out of his meditation, still active. He purposely tripped himself, just to get a rise out of Hinata. What Hinata did was hide as fast as she could. Next day, they were in the forest where the scent bug was hidden. They only had a small amount of time left to do so. They searched everywhere. Hinata looked around, using Byakugan. Naruto meditated, searching within the divination field. It was a great exercise for Naruto's mind. But then, he sensed three others in the forest. By that time, Hinata managed to find the bug, and they caught it. They had to wait for their newborn to come. Guys. There are three others with us. I'm also looking for the scent bug Naruto said. They were on guard. They split up. Hinata was captured. Naruto sensed this and got really mad. To a point where his sword couldn't suppress his rage. He hunted for the three. He found the Kiba and Shino were also captured. When he got to them, Hinata was gone. Apparently, she was sent over the waterfall. That only enraged Nero even more, killing off one of their own. But it turned out that Hinata was fine. The Stone Village Ninja sent out some of their bees, and Hinata did this absolute defense, where she emitted thin lines of chakra, while spinning. It was similar to the divination field, except it wasn't quite it. She killed off all the bugs, and Shino and Kiba got free. Naruto was still pissed off. The scent bug hatched. It took in Naruto's sweaty scent, thus making the mission fail. But that didn't stop Naruto from killing the other ninjas. He then noticed the bug on him. Ah fudge he said, calming down. He noticed he was clearly more powerful. Back in Konoha, a few days later, Naruto was hiding from a very angry Sakura, at the same time, explaining things to Hiashi. Oh Hinata did quite well. She helped me save our comrades. But the scent bug hatched prematurely and noticed only my scent. I was so ashamed, Naruto said. He knew he was safe in the Hayuga manor. Hiashi punched him across the face. Naruto chuckled at that. 
I deserved that. But regardless. I would like to know some of the Hayuga moves. I have studied Niji and Hinata, but I'm sure that you could teach me better, Naruto said. Hiashi smirked. Naruto. As long as you can keep your mouth shut and always be loyal to this family, then I will, Hiashi said. Naruto nodded. I won't tell anyone, nor will I abandon this family. I have too much respect for it now, Naruto said. That was the answer Hiashi was looking for. Three years have passed since Asuke abandoned Konoha. Naruto had also left, but he left with Jiraiya to do some special training. Now, Naruto is 16 and very powerful. He was 6'6". His hair was longer. He was very muscular and he made his vest more like a sleeveless trench coat. He could also freely control all of his powers. But one thing that had changed about him the most was the fact that girls and women wanted him. Every village he stopped by, he either had to have sex with a couple of the women who flocked to him or hide his appearance. He did so in Konoha. His first stop was at the Hyuga Manor. Hiashi answered it to find a hooded Naruto. Hiashi was about to throw him out when he saw the Kamikigan. Naruto? Is that you? Hiashi asked. Naruto nodded. He was welcomed in. He took off the cloak. Thank you sir. I hate having to hide myself like that, but I have to. Damn fangirls Naruto said. He was clearly cold, as it was the winter time. Hiashi had him sit down, while he had one of his maids get some cocoa for Naruto. Have you visited your mom recently? Hiashi asked. Naruto shook his head. I haven't. I wanted to see Hinata. The only woman I'll truly love, Naruto said. Hiashi understood. Fangirls can be a pain. Even the stuck-up Hiashi once had fangirls. The maid then came in. Naruto told her to stop. He then raised his hand and he was able to make the mug of cocoa float over into his hands. Amazing. I've never seen any ninja being able to do that, Hiashi said. Naruto chuckled. I've managed to make my chakra able to hold onto things just with mere thought. I have indeed grown quite powerful. Heck, tomorrow, I plan to go to the Anbu registration office. But of course, there is still one thing left to do for me, Naruto said. Hiashi understood. Hinata then came into the room. She saw her father, but didn't recognize Naruto. But she saw Hatai. But she controlled herself. Oh Hinata. Guess who returned Hiashi said. Hinata then recognized the sword that laid at Naruto's feet. Naruto got up as Hinata ran to embrace him. I missed you they both said. Hiashi smirked at the young couple. Next day, Naruto was sneaking around town for a little bit. He got to the Hokage Tower, where he could register for being an Anbu Squad member. He smirked as he saw Karyu there, taking in the names. At last, it was his turn. Name she stated unenthusiastically. Naruto smirked. Naruto Uzumaki Naruto said. Karyu was writing it down, then it dawned upon her. She looked up. Hey mom, Naruto said. Karyu got up to hug the 16-year-old. Being that he was the last in line, he had no trouble with this. My god. You've grown. My boy, Karyu, happily sobbed. Naruto embraced her. Thanks mom. How's everyone? He asked. Karyu smiled. Well, doing good. We are short on Anbu right now, due to some past conflicts and stuff. This village has been deteriorating and fast. I know for a fact that you will be in Anbu no problem, as I can sense your improvement. Many. Most of which you'll never really use, but still good to know in case you need them, Karyu said. Naruto smirked. He decided to pay Tsunade a visit. He went on in. Karyu was with him and told Tsunade. Tsunade hugged him more and squeezed the life out of him. Tsunade I need air he managed to say before she let go. After a few hours of discussion. Well, I'll have you a mask ready by tomorrow. However, you can only be an acting Anbu at the moment. You'll have to do a mission first to prove it. Unfortunately, there are no missions currently available at this moment, Tsunade said. Naruto smirked. Then this is my opportunity. Tsunade, I would like to request my own mission. The mission payback and rescue. I want to take a few ninjas with me to the Hidden Sound Village for an attack Naruto said. This surprised everyone in the room. You want to bring Sasuke back. But we still don't know where Odo is, Tsunade said. Naruto smirked. I do. I want to bring my brother back. I promised I would. Now is my time to do so. Three things I plan to accomplish during this mission, if accepted. One, being Sasuke, came back. Two, kill Orochimaru, so that he may never be the source of my misery, like he was, since before I was born. And three, send a message to the Akatsuki, to not mess with me, or Konoha Naruto said. Tsunade liked what she was hearing. Okay then. It shall be done. Oh, and another two things will be accomplished during this mission Tsunade said. Naruto was curious to find out. Karyu smirked, as did Shizune. You will become an Anbu, as well as Jounin, should this mission go as planned. 
I will be gathering the ninja of this village together tomorrow night. You know all of the mission parameters, and I am putting you in full charge of this. Others can complain, but the fact is, you are the most suited for this job, Tsunade said. Naruto thanked her, before heading home. He went to the Uzumaki mansion. He carried all of his stuff. He got to his old room, noticing not much had changed. So he unpacked. He then went into the kitchen, when he noticed a small boy was hiding from him. Naruto smirked. It's okay kid. I'm not going to hurt you, Naruto said. The kid was still shy. Suddenly, a female's voice called to the three-year-old. The voice called him, Sido. It was then that Sakura came to the kitchen, holding Sido in her arms. She saw Naruto, and was able to recognize him. Hey Sakura, Naruto said. Sakura smiled. Sido, this was the uncle I was talking about Sakura said. Sido smiled. Later, on the patio Sido was asleep in Sakura's arms. Karyu, Naruto, and Sakura were talking. Sasuke is coming back. I guarantee that. I just hope that I can get some help from some of our available ninja. Sasuke's son, sure, is a cute little guy, Naruto said. Sakura smiled. I know. Nothing like his father, thankfully. Hopefully, won't be a power seeker not on the same level as his father, at least. It's great to live here. Team 7, minus Kakashi, is truly a family. Even Konohamaru is now part of our family. Adopted shortly after you left Sakura said. Karyu nodded at that. Naruto looked forward to the big gathering tomorrow night. Though he swore that he could feel the presence of fangirls again. But he shrugged it off for tonight. All available ninja were gathered at the base of Hokage Tower. Tsunade was at the balcony, ready to make her speech. Attention Shinobi of Konoha. We have finally received the whereabouts of the Hidden Sound Village. Now it's normally not in our nature to intentionally start a war, but this is different. You see, we've been at war with the Sound since Orochimaru killed the third and took Sasuke Uchiha for himself. This is our chance to even the score. I don't expect you to volunteer for this. It's optional, but your help will be appreciated. No doubt, if we can strike hard and fast, Odo will be nothing more than a memory. Allow me to introduce to you, the leader for this high-class mission, Naruto Uzumaki Tsunade said. Naruto took to the mic. Many booing could be heard. Shut up. You know, I've done so much for this village. I have protected it with every fiber in my being, for God knows how long. In case you didn't know, I am the son of the Fox Princess, Karyu, and the late fourth Hokage, Ken Uzumaki. But for those of you who didn't know, I'm not a half-demon. Since the age of 12, I have been a full-fledged demon, having merged my soul with my grandfather, the so-called hated Kaiubi. You know why Kaiubi attacked this village in the first place, Naruto said. That had silenced the crowd. Because he was trying to protect his daughter, my mother due to a false rumor, spread by Orochimaru. All I ask now, is to give me a chance. The council has, so why can't you, Naruto said. The crowd began to discuss, all the while some fangirls kept chanting for Naruto. I was appointed leader for this mission, as it was I who created this mission. Three years ago, I searched for the exact location of Odo. I found it. Orochimaru isn't safe anymore. I want to kill him, as he has brought me my pain. Making the village I love hate me, due to a false rumor. Took away my father, grandfather, and my first surrogate grandfather, the third Hokage. Then, he wants to use Sasuke Uchiha as a vessel. He wants my brother as his vessel. I won't stand for it, Naruto said. All the ninja began to cheer, now feeling the sympathy of Naruto. You guys don't know how much this means. If you want to help me take down Orochimaru, once and for all, give me a hell's yeah, Naruto shouted. Hell's yeah. The entire shinobi population of Konoha shouted. Naruto was moved by this. Thank you again. I expect to see some familiar faces for some of you, and I hope that we can all come back alive. Payment revenge is our payment, and blood Naruto said. Later, Naruto was hanging out with the rookie 8, being that Sasuke is missing, Team Fantasia, and Guy's team. They were all at a campfire, drinking. Except for Lee, he wasn't allowed any, due to getting very dangerous when drunk. I'm glad to see all of you want to help me, but I can't let two people do so. Sakura. You are a mother. Your child will be so messed up if you are to ever abandon you. And Hinata. I won't allow you to go. You mean too much to me to even see a scratch on you, Naruto said. Both girls were going to protest until they realized that his words were true. The flames of youth shall Lee try to say before being glared at by everyone. Lee. Drop the flames of youth crap. It's old. You can follow that up. By getting some new gear. And for crying out loud, get a wild haircut. Jeez Naruto said. Everyone laughed at Lee, who was embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, I can see this guy with an attitude, except he ain't showing it. Things aren't so positive in this world. Try to feed on the negatives as well, Gale said. Oh, and Gara also said he and his siblings will help out as well. 
I visited them quickly before I came back, Naruto said to everyone. That was good news. It was a good night for them, as in two days, they would begin their war. The Konoha army had arrived. It consisted of three, Gai, Asuma, and New Jounin, Haruka, a lot of them, with the leader being Naruto. Some of the ninja had to stay behind, in case anything happened to the village. Many people that have seen Naruto, have considered him to be the most powerful ninja ever. But he doubted that. But still, it sounded nice. Down there is Odo. The sound village. Let no ninja escape from there alive. But first, we have ourselves some allies, Naruto said. A few demon foxes came out. Most of the ninja were scared, due to they were still shaken over the Kaiubi incident. Don't worry. They listened to me. Sanjay. It is your duty to make sure our foxy friends do what you tell them. They will be of great help, Naruto said. Sanjay nodded. Naruto then hits his thumb, causing it to bleed. Stand back everyone. I'm about to summon Naruto, as he made the seals to summon. When he was summoned, it was a beautiful lady. In fact, it was Solace. Grandson. What assistance is required? Solace said, waving her seven tails. Naruto proudly showed all nine tails. We are going to attack Odo. Bring nothing, but destruction. But remember, to stay away from Sasuke and Orochimaru. They're mine. Your first attack will be our signal, Naruto said. Solace jumped from the cliff and transformed into her demon form. She slammed all seven tails onto the ground, causing a massive earthquake for the sound village. All the ninja from Konoha then jumped into action. Naruto was the last one down, liking all the bloody saw. He used his chakra to fling any ninja that got near him, or he decapitated them with his sword. He left massive claw marks, with the aid of his metal arm and hand protectors. He then saw Rachimaru, Kabuto, and Sasuke. Just the three guys I was looking for. I sensed your arrival, Naruto said, as he activated the Kamikigan. He pointed at Kabuto. We have some long unfinished business Naruto said. Kabuto charged up to Naruto. But Naruto sidestepped, before sealing off all of Kabuto's chakra coils. He then used Rasengan on Kabuto's stomach. Kabuto was sent flying. Unlike last time, you can't regenerate lost cells until your chakra coils are freed up. However, it's your leader and his vessel that will see my true power, before feeling it Naruto said. He became demonic. Kabuto was scared. Help Kabuto said. Two ninjas then jumped from the buildings and tried to attack Naruto. However, using his chakra, he sent the ninja to the other side of the village. They crashed into a couple of houses, which ultimately killed the ninjas. Naruto then picked up Kabuto, before ripping his heart out and squeezing it, watching it explode in his hands. Where's my challenge? Naruto asked, as Sasuke stepped up. He was taller, way more powerful than last time. In level 2, he was equal to Naruto. Sasuke tossed out some kunais, but Naruto blocked them with his sword. He then focused a great deal of chakra to his sword and slashed the ground, causing a massive wave of chakra to hit Sasuke. You made the wrong choice three years ago. I'm here to correct it for you, Naruto said. Suddenly, he turned around and was met with the Chiori to the face. How do you like me now? Sasuke asked. Naruto was squirming in pain as he removed them from his face. His face healed quickly and only a single scar was left that was from the top of the forehead to the chin in the middle of the right eye. Naruto could still see perfectly. That hurt. Glad to see that you are strong, Naruto said. The two exchanged a variety of techniques for a few minutes. Naruto then had Chiori shoved through his stomach. He was down. He was holding his gut. Why don't I have Menjiku Sharingan? Sasuke said to himself. Naruto heard it as he got up and the hole regenerated. Because it will take a lot more than that to kill me, Naruto said. His stomach was fully healed. Naruto smirked. His Kamikigan saw into Sasuke's mind. To answer your question about Sakura, she was pregnant. She has your son Sasuke. His name is Sido. Three years old Naruto said. Sasuke roared and charged up at Naruto again. But Naruto sealed his legs off at that point. You hate being under this curse, yet it's your answer to getting revenge. Itachi would never let you kill him if you were this much under Rachimaru's curse. Believe me, I know. So let me help you, Naruto said. His hand glowed red as a lot of chakra then began to go into many of Sasuke's open wounds. Rachimaru was busy fighting off Solace. Which was good for Naruto. Sasuke screamed in agony as he felt the curse leave him. He felt like he was more powerful as the curse left him. Like, all the chakra he spent during that form came back to him. But even so, he felt more power. Something, almost animalistic. The curse seal was gone from Sasuke. He looked at himself. He saw he had claws. He felt four tails from him. His sight and smell had increased. Naruto. I no longer feel his poison. I'm sorry. But what happened? Sasuke asked. Naruto smirked. 
in the process of removing your curses, I have turned you into a half-demon, much like I used to be. Now, I'm giving you a choice. Be a missing ninja forever, or return to Konoha. Do you have a family waiting for you? I wish to kill Itachi. I once looked up to him as well. We will kill him, together Naruto said, he tossed out Sasuke's old leaf headband. It landed at his feet. Sasuke smirked. I've made up my mind, Sasuke said. He took off his sound headband and crushed it under his new powers. He then put on his Konoha headband. We are still in the middle of a mission. Only one of three parameters have been met. Kill some of the sound ninjas still remaining. Don't expect our comrades to be nice to you. Prove them that you are back, Naruto said. Solace was injured. Rama. You've done your part. Let me kill Orochimaru now, Naruto said, as Solace vanished. Orochimaru hissed. You stole my vessel, Orochimaru said. Naruto flipped him off. You stole my grandfather, father, and my brother. You made the villagers hate me a bit. You made me a full-fledged demon, which is the only good thing. Now, prepare to die, Naruto said. He was so fast that Orochimaru barely saw him. Orochimaru hit a punch to Naruto's gut, which was still sensitive. Orochi Amaru found himself after 10 minutes, enjoying himself, as he continuously beat up Naruto. Then, he saw into the Menjiku Sharingan of Naruto, and felt a great deal of pain through his entire body. Naruto was now very demonic, and kept slashing, and cutting Orochimaru up. Orochimaru stooped with a bloodied face, arms, legs, and was practically defeated. It's time to die. Nine-tailed slash Naruto said, as he unsheathed his sword. He ran up to Orochimaru, and at faster than lightning speeds, he slashed Orochimaru eight times. Then, Anrito jumped into the air and did his hell slash. A massive chakra wave sent at Orochimaru, disintegrated him entirely. Naruto then looked at the battle. The sound ninja were weak. Only two or three of Konoha's ninja were killed, and none of them were whom Naruto knew. Only a small bunch of the ninja remained. We surrender the sound ninja said. They had won. In the middle of the village, Sasuke was being congratulated for returning by everyone, before the two brothers embraced. There is another way to get Menjiku Sharingan. I will help you soon enough, Naruto said. Two weeks later, the ninja returned to Konoha. Naruto, tired as well, explained the mission details to Tsunade. Congratulations Naruto. You've succeeded. You are now a Jounin and Anbu. You have earned both, which makes you an elite, Tsunade said. Tsunade passed a tailor-made Jounin vest to Naruto. Jounin invests were black, instead of dark green. It had the features that Naruto had added to his vest that made it look like a sleeveless trench coat. Naruto took off his Shuen invest, taking one last look at it. Good memories. I'll put it somewhere safe, Naruto said, putting on his Jounin invest. How would you like to have a teaching job? You know, instructor for three genin? Swan asked. Naruto nodded at that, he liked it very much. But matters cleared up, Naruto was ready to have his first rookie genin team. They were told to meet at training ground 16. Oh, and he would be having four gen in this time. My old stomping grounds. Good memories here, Naruto said. He was early, which surprised him. So he decided to meditate. When he felt one of the gen in, he stopped. He was surprised that it was Sasuke. Hmm. To think that one day, you'd be my instructor, Sasuke said. The two shook hands. I'm surprised. I just hope the rest of my team doesn't let me down. Otherwise, you'll be a genius for a while, and truth be honest, we know you're capable of being a Jounin Naruto said. Sasuke then looked up. My demon side is fading. I'm becoming 100% human. I thought what you did was permanent, Sasuke said. Naruto sighed. I was afraid of that. Luckily, our first mission will be to fix that. By my estimation, you have about three more months before the demon chakra has vanished entirely. More than enough time, Naruto said. Suddenly, his young genin came in. It was Konohamaru and his two best friends, Mogi and Yudin. Big brother. Konohamaru shouted and waved. A few minutes later. No introduction is really needed, as we all know each other. As you are aware, only nine of the passing students actually become genin. The test I'm going to do to you is cruel, but in the end, much more worth it than you think. You see, at this time of year, there are some forest demons that are more hyper per se. The test your guts, determination and will, plus the ability to work as a team, you three, as Sasuke has already done this, will be staying five entire days in the forest of death, Naruto said. Sasuke was shocked. The rookies shuddered at that. That's cruel, you know Sasuke said. Naruto smirked. Relax. It's not like they will die. We are going in to make sure that doesn't happen, of course, we will be watching from a distance, Naruto said. The three were in the forest of death the next day. Sasuke and Naruto made sure they were okay. As suspected, the three were excellent in working together, defeating the random weak demons that resided there. Think of it this way Sasuke. 
In order to pass, they need to work as a team. But this will prepare them for the Chunin exams, as this is stage 2. Kanohimaru is good at setting traps, Yudin is smart, and Mogi likes to take risks. A well-oiled team Naruto said. Sasuke smirked. The five days were up. You've done well. You have all passed. You exceeded my expectations, and I'm proud of you Naruto said. They were outside of Tsunade's office. Naruto walked in. Oh Naruto. Tsunade isn't here, Shizun said. Naruto smiled. That's okay. Just wanted to know if there were some missions to do. My team passed, Naruto said. Shizun shook her head. All the low-level missions have been taken for the moment, Shizun said. Naruto smirked. Good. I'm taking my team on a field trip then. Consider it a low-wage C-class mission that I'll pay for. I have the right money for it. I need to take Sasuke to Fox Mountain, Naruto said. Was writing this info down. How does 200 yen a shot sound? Shizun asked. Naruto smirked. He nodded. He then left. Well guys, pack your bags. C-class mission to the Fox Mountain, Naruto said. Alright. A C-class mission. This will be good, Kinohimaru said. The three then ran off to pack their stuff. You didn't have to, Sasuke said. Naruto shook his head. I did. You've used the curse far too long. It gave you a lot of strength back when I broke it, but we are brothers. You said it yourself, you want to be a half-demon. I'm giving you the chance to do that, plus get the Manjiku Sharingan. No consequences, no death, Naruto said. Sasuke then hugged Naruto. Easy there. Don't want to ruin your reputation, Naruto said. Sasuke smirked at that comment. It was just a few hours away before Naruto and his team were to head out to Fox Mountain. Sasuke and Naruto were battling each other in an all-out spar. Naruto smirked. That's enough. You are indeed very powerful, Sasuke Naruto said. Naruto didn't look like there were many scratches, but that was due to quick healing. Sasuke had a few. I know. But I'm weakening. The fox's blood is slowly fading. But I know it won't be for long Sasuke said, manipulating a fireball into a giant fireball. That was when Guy walked in. Impressive Guy said. Naruto and Sasuke heard this and smirked. The fire of Guy said, before Naruto put up his hand to stop. Guy sensei. We don't need to hear that crap. Sasuke and I have been through a lot. Fire of youth. Don't give me that bullcrap. I'm strong because I have drive. So does Sasuke. Now if you have anything interesting to say, we want to know how the score is between you and our sensei. Naruto said. Guy smirked. Very well. We were tied 200 all until I found out yesterday about something. Though, I'm not supposed to tell you too Guy said. Suddenly, he saw himself surrounded by two fireball wielding ninjas who wanted an answer. Don't hide information from us. Whatever you said you were going to do in order to not get hurt, we'll crank that pain up 100 fold Sasuke said. Guy wasn't afraid. No pain then, I just was simply asked to keep a secret from you too Guy said. Sasuke put his fireball out before grabbing Ai's throat. Easy there Sasuke. I have two ways to get this information out of him. Turn him around so I can look into his eyes, Naruto said. A faint crackling sound could be heard, plus a faint red glow was seen. It was Kamikigan. Guy now had a worried look in his eyes. He knew that Naruto would find it, as he can see into people's minds. Naruto then was shocked. You may go, Naruto said. Sasuke released him, and Guy just simply ran off. It must be good, Sasuke said. Naruto was looking at the ground while he still had the Kamikigan active. Sasuke. Go to the meeting point. I know we only have a few hours to go, but I need to contact my father, and I need to be alone, Naruto said. Sasuke understood, as Naruto was able to develop the ability to speak to the dead when meditating. Meditation. Hello son Ken Uzumaki said. Naruto smiled. Ken smiled. It's been a while. I know about your promotions. You are very close to your dream, Ken said to Naruto. Naruto then looked down. Ken chuckled. Son, I know what you are thinking. What you saw from Guy's thoughts. I approve. Truthfully, I'm surprised it took this long. I didn't expect your mother to do that Ken said. Naruto looked at his father. Are you sure dad? Naruto asked. Ken nodded. End meditation. Naruto rushed to the meeting point. Only Sasuke was there. Well it's good news then, if my father approves. Turns out, mom is dating someone Naruto said. Sasuke was shocked. Really? Never knew. I want more info. Let's go talk to her, Sasuke said. They both ran to the Uzumaki mansion. They both heard a puking sound. They rushed to it. It was Karyu. Luckily, she was throwing up in the bathroom. Mom, what's wrong? Naruto asked. Karyu smirked. Nothing to be concerned about she said. Sasuke sighed. Well, can you at least tell us who you're dating? Sasuke asked. 
That shocked Karyu that she threw up again. I know who it is. It's Kakashi Sensei, Naruto said. Sasuke had no real choice but to smirk at that. I'm surprised. But can your mom handle all of his perversion? Sasuke asked. Karyu smirked again. I know I can. Believe me he's Karyu said before stopping herself. Thank you mom, we didn't want to know what Naruto said. Karyu then looked at them. I wanted to tell you boys after your trip to Fox Mountain. But I'm cornered now. Yes, I am dating Kakashi. I know the Ken approves. I hope you guys do, Karyu said. Both Naruto and Sasuke nodded. We approve, unless there are things otherwise. Like a bad criminal record. But we can handle him, Sasuke said. He then looked at his watch. Damn. I'm supposed to meet Sakura and Sido before I head out. I'm going to be late, Sasuke said. Karyu then got up. The main reason why I didn't want to tell you is because I have some other information. I know you two won't stop bugging me until you two find out the truth, as demons don't get sick. Truth is I'm pregnant, Karyu said. That shocked the two brothers. Then, the loudest holy crap could be heard through Konoha. The trip to Fox Mountain was rather quick. Naruto had said that this mission was to be a fast one, so no weights were used, making the three young genin very fast. Two weeks had passed by. They had reached their destination. Fox Mountain. They proceeded up the trail, which led them to the Fox Temple. There, Naruto saw Solace. Rama. I'm back, Naruto said. Solace smiled as the two hugged each other. What brings you back here? Solace asked. Naruto smirked. He looked at the temple. The god stone. More wishes, eh? Better be important, Solace said. Naruto chuckled. Very important. You see, I freed Sasuke from his curse, making him a temporary half-demon in the process. In order to keep his power at his current level, he needs to stay, half-demon Naruto said. Solace nodded and opened up the doors. In the center of it was the god stone. Konohamaru, Mogi, Yudin. I want you three to do some training. The Chunin exams are coming up soon, and in order to prepare you, I must train your minds as well. Third door on the right wall. Nightmare room. It's up to you if you want to train, but if you don't, I won't put this team in the Chunin exams, Naruto said. The three went into the room. Sasuke smirked. You wouldn't do that, would you? Sasuke asked. Naruto shook his head. But only because I know right now, you should be a Jounin. Therefore, I have to. You're obliged to take the exam. If you weren't here, that wouldn't have been an empty threat. I need some of your blood to be exposed for this wish to work, Naruto said. Sasuke then cut his hand and placed it on the stone. It glowed. Solace began her chant. Speak your first wish, Solace said. Sasuke smirked. My wish is to become a permanent half-fox demon, Sasuke said. He glowed. He growled in pain and agony. He felt the transformation for it being permanent happen. Lastly, he sprouted all of his tails, which in total was five. State your second wish, Sala said. Sasuke was surprised. He then looked at Naruto and smirked. I wish to have a weapon. A sword, namely, to keep my demon blood at bay, Sasuke said. The stone then glowed again as Sasuke looked in awe as he saw a light blue blade come through. It was about three one half feet long, and it was amazing. Once the sword was finished, Sasuke took it. The sword. The reason I got it was the same reason why Naruto has his. Naruto has saved me from a life of true darkness. He is my brother, and with that, I shall name the sword, Brotherhood Sasuke said. He smirked. Three days would pass. The young genin stepped out, talking to each other. That was intense. Those ghosts and all those nightmarish things we had to see. I feel like I could take on the world now, Kinohamaru said. Naruto smirked. That's the kind of attitude I wanted to hear. You three have met, if not exceeded, what I expect from any student of mine. The most important lesson was to never give up, no matter how bad. That will be the one thing you must keep in mind during the entirety of the Chunin exams. It is coming up in one month from today. I suggest we start moving back to get at least two weeks in Naruto. The group left. And as they did, Solace couldn't help but smile. She was proud of her grandson as he had turned into a fine leader. All of the Jounin had gathered into an underground bar, including Naruto. Though he and Karyu didn't have any alcoholic drinks. Karyu, due to being pregnant and Naruto, for being underage. This was when Naruto returned with his team. Tsunade then walked in. That stopped a drinking contest between Guy and Kakashi. At that point, Kakashi had won that one. Alright listen up. As you well know, the Chunin exams are coming up very soon. Thus it's time to select the proctors. Unfortunately for most, you will not be, as you have Genin teams Tsunade said. Naruto hesitated. The bunch of drunk Jounin tried to hit on Karyu. When Naruto noticed that, he immediately went to protect her. Stay away. Naruto said, in a very vicious voice. 
that had stopped anyone from furthering trying to hit on Karyu, except for Kakashi. But Naruto clawed him, which shredded the mask. Naruto smirked. Kakashi had a good face. No wonder you tried to hide it, Naruto said. Naruto then took his previous seat. Now if we're done fighting, let's name our proctors. First exam, written, will be, as usual, Ibiki Tsunade said. Naruto looked over to Ibiki, who was the same as ever. Good luck old man on trying to break my team. Won't work, Naruto said. Ibiki then turned his head to Naruto. Mr. Uzumaki. Son of the fourth, and will be sixth. You have some guts to say that. You're lucky you're even both Anbu and Jounin, without taking the exams. Just a very dangerous mission that you lead. Impressive, but not the correct way. And what about your team last time I saw the younger three, they were just brats. I'd like to know how they can survive me, Ibiki said as Naruto smirked. I see. You want to know. How badly though? Would you like to know, or be surprised? If you'd like to be surprised then you shall never know. Once in a lifetime opportunity. I can guarantee that they will make it to the third exam, Naruto said. Ibiki smirked. Kid. I like you. You really are a true ninja. I Ibiki said, before Naruto raised his hand to stop Ibiki. Naruto then looked at Ibiki, with the Kamikigan. I know your answer already. I had subjected them to a series of mind games. When we went to Fox Mountain, to make Sasuke a permanent half-demon, as I'm sure you were all thinking how the hell did it happen, there are two things I needed upon Fox Mountain. The Nightmare Room, and the God Stone. The God Stone grants two wishes, it's what created this sword on my back, and made me a full-fledged demon. It was able to make Sasuke a half-demon, plus a similar weapon. But the Nightmare Room, where the young Genin spent three days in, subjected them to various mind games. Forced them to think outside their set boundaries, each setting new levels for them. And in the end, they came out, talking about it. They had fear, but they also had a sense of accomplishment. They had overcome many of their own fears. This exam should be a breeze for them. As it will be for any future team. The first thing they have to do, to become Genin on my team, after graduating, is to survive the forest of death. That covers two parts. The rest is up to them, Naruto said. Everyone clapped at that speech. Good thinking Naruto. For the second exam. We shall have Kakashi as our proctor Tsunade said. Naruto smiled. Kakashi smiled back. As for the third exam, it would be wise to have Karyu as the proctor Tsunade said. Karyu shook her head. She then saw a wastebasket, ran to it, and threw up. Ate something bad? Swan asked Karyu. Karyu shook her head. No. And the reason I refuse is because I'm pregnant, Karyu said. That shocked everyone. You all had to find out eventually. I was first to find out. Oh, and Kakashi, don't be surprised if I subject you to many forms of torture before I let you go, because it's yours Naruto said. Kakashi fainted at that. Naruto then walked over and kicked him in the nuts. Kakashi screamed in agony. Everyone backed away. Damn. Well that leaves us empty. And since most of us have genin teams, I guess Karyu will have to choose Swan. Karyu nodded. Naruto he's a fair judge and won't take sides, Karyu said. Tsunade trusted Karyu for that decision. Later, Naruto was on top of Hokage Tower, looking over Konoha. Suddenly, Jiraiya walked up beside him. How was your mission? Naruto asked. He was curious. Good. Very difficult to complete, but doable. But that pales in comparison to you. You've become an Anbu and a Jounin, all because you led a war to Sound Village. I'm proud of you, Jiraiya said. Naruto smiled. I was also named this year's third exam proctor. Mom's going to be out this time. Who'd have thought that one of my old man's own would date my mom, let alone get her pregnant, Naruto said. Jiraiya chuckled. Well, I say good. I'm sure you are referring to Kakashi. Oh well. At least if she's happy. Oh, and I highly doubt that any war will break out this time. Just be weary of the one called Diego. I've seen this gen in an action. Friendly guy outside of a fight. Otherwise, you can try to run, but it will fail, Jiraiya said. Naruto smirked. Thanks for the heads up, Naruto said. He left his spot. He was done thinking, for now. The first exam was done. Naruto's team easily passed it. Same for the second exam. But they were only half of the third exam. The third exam is done by a tournament. It is held in front of many judges. In the 1000 area. But only a handful, such as the elite, a couple of the cages, and the feudal lords, will judge if you are to become Chunin or not. It's a mentality, physicality, emotion, and strategic test, all wrapped in one. Since this is a tournament, it will see who is the strongest of you eight genin, but the winner of the overall tournament will only have bragging rights. The judges will determine, as well as I, as to who will become a Chunin. All of you might, or none at all. As such, we are giving you guys exactly one month to brush up on your skills. You've already drawn your numbers. Now. Let's see who is facing whom. 
You've all given your names with the numbers, so look at the scoreboard Naruto said. Everyone looked. Match number 1. Konohamaru vs Sasuke Uchiha. MATCH number 2. Lock vs Shock. Match number 3. Yudin vs Hanabi Hayuga. Match number 4. Mogi vs Diego. Ouch Konohamaru said. He knew he was going to lose. But he looked at Sasuke and smiled. I hope you can at least try. I know you don't like to back down Sasuke said to Konohamaru. Later, everyone was out of the forest of death. Naruto had given team orders to train hard and if need be, with each other. He was taking Hanabi with him to the Hayuga Manor. Hanabi. I know you will win your match against Yudin. In fact, the only one on my team that I know will advance past the first round is Sasuke. Heck, he's in the finals. But Diego. I heard about him. He has the special ability to manipulate gravity. Meaning he can increase the weight around you. Me can make you feel very heavy. This would be cool training, but an opponent with this is not good. You have amazing abilities, but as far as you are concerned, you must really step up your training. Training from your father will not do any more. No offense to him, Naruto said. Hanabi understood. I know. I should step up training now, but what do I do? I'm only 11. I've mastered just about all the Hayuga secrets Hanabi said. Naruto smirked as they were in front of the manor. Naruto then talked to Hiashi. Hiashi understood. We've got 30 days to improve Hanabi to make it so that she has a great chance. I mean, you saw the improvement Hanada made over the years. A powerful ninja must be defeated by Hanabi. Otherwise, she risks her own death, Naruto said. Hiashi didn't like that last line, but agreed. You and Hinata train her then. I approve of just about everything. Make sure she is trained to at least match Hinata, if not surpass Hiashi. So this war continues. Fine by me. I never really cared who was more favored anyway, a sweet voice said. Everyone recognized it. It was Hinata. Hinata was carrying a bag of weights. Alright Hanabi. It's time to begin. Each day will be a new exercise for you. I feel you should do what I did first. Increase your speed. I want you to wear 20 pounds of each arm and leg. Then, after a good meal and it being settled, 500 laps around the border of Kanoha Hinata said. Hanabi was shocked. What? You expect me to do that Hanbi shouted. Hinata smirked. Raise your voice like that and you'll have to wear all the weights and do double before I expected. Remember these three rules. Rule number one. Won the battlefield, show no love. Love will get you killed, Hinata said. She could tell she had gotten into Hanabi's head. Hiashi looked with mixed emotions. Hinata was continuing to show more power to her, but did she have to be this cruel? That's what Hiashi was thinking. Rule number two. Until you reach the sand in her cage level, improvement is always needed. Especially punctuality Naruto said. Everyone looked at him oddly. My former sensei was always late and made up excuses. Really irritated me, Naruto said. Everyone understood after that. Rule number three. You can trust your sensei and never question their motives. If you do, you'll lose focus on what is to be learned. Hiashi said Naruto smiled at that. Hanabi then thought it out for a minute before putting on the required weights. It would be nightfall before she would come back. The next day, Hinata was going to help Hanabi s dodging with the weights only Hinata had claws on. In the end, Hanabi was roughed up pretty badly. She eventually managed to dodge Hinata's attacks. Although she did notice that Hinata wasn't using her 100 speed. Next day, water walking. Hanabi did manage to get control of that. The routine continued a couple of times before they worked on her aiming and closing in and attacking. Three days before the exam. Well, my team has improved. So have you, Hanabi. We've taught you all that we could, so take a break. You deserve it. And if you don't, well, I don't know what Naruto said. Heish was with Naruto. Karyu was there as well. Kakashi and her were going to set a wedding date eventually. That kinda ticked off Naruto. Consider it an order, Hiashi said. Hanabi understood and nearly collapsed. That was great, Hanabi said. She liked the training once she got used to it. As far as Naruto could remember for this match, as he had a feeling it was about to close, Sasuke was dominant, but Konohamaru kept his cool, never backing down, and seemed to be setting traps left right and center. But it was a hot day out, Konohamaru was sweating profusely. He had Sasuke tangled up in diamond thread wire. The most powerful and explosive wire a ninja could buy. He held the wire in his hands. Okay Sasuke. It's time to prove my worth. I'm unleashing the rest of what I can do into this last attack. Thunder Spiral Jutsu. Konohamaru shouted as his chakra was molded into electricity. This led to Sasuke being electrocuted for 5 minutes. Konohamaru then let go and collapsed. Sasuke then took this as his chance, but Konohamaru stopped him. Don't bother. I didn't want to, but it would appear that I can't continue. 
At least if I give now, I'll know I pulled everything I could. So I'm out Kinohimaru said, before fainting. Naruto declared the match over. Good work, both of you, Naruto said. The next match began, seeing a shock win. Yudin then had to face Hanabi. The match began. Yudin had become more rounded out when it came to his attributes, such as speed, defense, and strength. But Hanabi's ruthless training paid off right here, as after letting Yudin unleash his best moves, Hanabi defeated Yudin. Mogi then was in a world of hurt. She too, was evenly balanced, but Diego, was three years older, more experienced, and very powerful. I don't trust this Diego kid. He's too powerful. I wasn't even this powerful. He must have some sort of bloodline, demon, or inner power that he can freely use. He can manipulate gravity, even of himself. If he's able to do that, he will only become much stronger Naruto thought, as Mogi delivered the final blow. Diego had won. When the 13-year-old black-haired kid locked eyes with Hanabi, there was tension already there. We will begin the next round in one hour, Naruto said. He left the stage and headed to where the participants were allowed to go. He specifically sat down next to Sasuke. I knew Kanohimaru would be good. He damaged me more than I will let on, Sasuke said. Naruto smirked. Well then, defeating Shock won't be hard. I can tell he's not overly powerful. But your final round opponent, either Hanabi or Diego, will be a tough challenge. I was training Hanabi for one specific reason though, and that was to defeat him. Though it may only be to defeat him, she will continue training herself. I don't know how hard she will push herself, but you can bet on my favorite ramen meal that if you don't continue, she will surpass you, Naruto said. Sasuke smirked. I see. Well I wish Sakura didn't have to go on a mission, let alone take Sido with her. I wanted them to see me. But they are on a mission, and apparently, she managed to go to Fox Mountain and turn Sido into a half-demon. Can you believe that? Not that I don't mind though. Better to get it done and over with, Sasuke said. Naruto nodded. He activated the Ryujikin and looked at Diego. He got the stats. He looked at the source of his power. The five-tailed scorpion demon, Katasil. The gravity demon. The end. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.